there we go. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? I have. Okay, little technical difficulty there. <laughs> How's it going? I'm Godless Sewing, and I have not only lost my mind, but I have lost my voice. <laughs> Another beautiful day here in sunny Southern California. How's everybody doing? Liz, very good to see you. Awesome, awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have my full Batman voice going. <laughs> if anyone wants to join, let me know. It's it's really early, I know. <laughs> so how bad is my voice, Liz? How bad, huh? <laughs> oh, but I have my Earl Grey pot tea. So I'm ready to go. <laughs> you know, it's been unseasonably warm here in California. So it doesn't even feel like Christmas at all. At all. And I'm not necessarily a Christmas fan, so that's okay. Oh. So I thought I was going to pull out my brother, PE535, which is over here. But I just found out that part of the ring in the hoop is broken. So I put tape on it. And I'm going to see if that if that works. Well, it's bad, but you have pot tea. <laughs> very true. Very true. It's nursed me through some, some bad times. <laughs> uh. How's uh, the world of uh, Portland, Oregon this evening, huh? I know it's uh, pretty freezing out there probably because it's cold here. <clears throat> I bought this fancy webcam thinking it would be better than the other one I had. And it's exactly the same. <laughs> the only difference is that it comes with a ring around the camera. That's like literally the only difference. <laughs> but the quality is good, but it doesn't necessarily give me what I want. But isn't that all technology? I'm losing my voice because I'm working in the cold. It's 38. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> Alexa, what's the temperature right now? Right now, it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, at least my my uh, computer knows that. <laughs> it knows my voice when I have the Batman voice going. Well, let's see what happened with this one. But it's an, another exciting night. I made a scarf, and I got a... Um, I actually got some hate mail from people. They were feeling that I'm culturally insensitive for making that scarf. So it was very interesting. It was very interesting that I got called culturally insensitive for making a scarf. Which still, honestly, honestly, it's uh, some material that I bought from, um, from uh, Hobby Lobby, you know. But no matter what you do, someone's going to complain about it on, on the internet. <laughs> what did I do with that scarf? Here it is. Uh -uh. For the first time in a long time, I received a lot of hate mail for making this. So you know I have to show it on the live stream. <laughs> It's actually not as cold as it has been, but it's going to be probably freezing tonight. So, how's everybody doing? I see a few people watching. Liz is in the chat. 
<laughs> the great moderator, Liz. <laughs> It's because it has an African print. I received a lot of hate mail. It's been a while. It's been a while since people and people watched my video and went to Twitter to send me private messages. It was, it's weird. You know, I made a video about cultural appropriation and because of the internet, we can see each other around the world. You know, you don't know what my background is, where I'm from. And it was hilarious to watch people get angry because I made an African print scarf. It's just, it's hilarious. Quite a few people have sent me messages too. It's no one in the community or, or no one that I, that I um, know, you know, but quite a few people have sent me hate mail. <laughs> oh, but you know what? Like, if you're on the internet, you have offended somebody just by your presence. <laughs> I wear heathen I wear heathen patches on purpose. <laughs> so we're all we're we're all trolling each other, I guess. You know, tomorrow when I wake up, I won't have to ask why I do not have a voice. <laughs> So I'm in the process of moving, but the one beautiful thing that's happened is I'm discovering everything that I've lost in this room. <laughs> every, every bobbin, because certain sewing machines take certain bobbins, like certain bobbins are um, all metal or they have only four holes where other ones have six or seven. They have different sizes depending on the age. So I've found everything that I've lost because I'm moving cabinets and, and stuff. It's actually hilarious. And <laughs> I found a computer. <laughs> I had so much stuff hidden in here. I forgot that um, about a Chromebook that I had when I first started doing YouTube. And it was funny because it had all my old information on it. And it's I've changed a lot. <laughs> but um, I'm still getting hate mail about the scarf. And I, I don't understand in my last video. Um, that's why I put in that, that part about I, how I can't dance because I wanted to see how many people are watching my video. And some guy literally told me you can't dance and I hate your scarf. <laughs> so good times, good times. Uh, uh, oh man. The pot tea is definitely helping. It's definitely, definitely helping. So what's going on tonight? I was thinking about um, making a patch and I still probably will because I want to test out my brother, um, PE-535, because I want to see if this patch actually helps it or not. But we'll see. Because it's amazing how one little piece can break on a sewing machine, and the entire machine is inoperable. So I really, really have to um, hope that, that my quick fix doesn't break the machine any further. Because I do have a tendency to exacerbate problems because you think you fix something and then you turn it on and five other problems come from what you missed. The great moderator. <laughs> Be safe. <laughs> So I have my sewing machine from um, 1913. And, you know, it's the first time that I plugged in something and it didn't start a mini fire. I'm actually still kind of shocked on the fact that it worked. And it's a 109-year-old sewing machine. And, you know, after I replaced the belt, it fired right up. And honestly, that's rare. Because with antique sewing machines, you are asking for a fire. You are asking for something to get set on fire. 
I don't know if you can, well, you can't see it that well, but this thing is the condi for the condition that this sewing machine is in. It's amazing. And I always say um, sewing machines are like parrots. They're going to outlive us all. <laughs> so I got to find the, the foot for this thing, but it's amazing how it still works after all this time. And for those who think I'm kidding, this is an electrical fire waiting to happen. This is the definition of an electrical fire waiting to happen. And that's why I was kind of scared when I when I um, went to plug this machine in originally. Because every time I've ever plugged in an antique plug, just to see what would happen, it's either tripped the breaker in this room or started a fire. <laughs> My my um, white rotary literally shot a spark at me. <laughs> it was not getting, and I I learned a lesson that day. And yes, I have almost completely lost my voice. It's the plight of a loud mouth. Let me grab the plug. It's kind of shocking because, like I said, normally when I plug these things in, they start smoking. They, you know, you touch it and you're like, ah, uh, you, you get electrocuted. The old school vintage machines are not for the faint of heart. But this particular machine, um, for the first time ever, actually worked when I plugged it in, which is rare. Super rare. <laughs> oh, let me take this off. And this. All right, there we go. So <clears throat> I have completely, almost completely lost my voice. I'm drinking tea. And I decided to do this live stream because I don't know if I'm, I might live stream next week, but I don't know if I'll be doing a video because of everything that's been going on. And all that really means is that I'm in the process of moving. Hence me losing my voice. <laughs> because it's that time of year. I'm sure it's an allergy or something. And I should have stopped talking yesterday. But, you know, I'm a talker. <laughs> so I utterly and completely, um, whenever I lose my voice, this happens to me every time where I go through this Batman phase where I start talking like this. Because, <laughs> because I, um, I'm always at a certain octave, you know, and if I brought it down an octave, my voice would probably uh, heal itself. But I have my Earl Grey pot tea going. So I was thinking about making something, but I need some suggestions. Today, I went to um, Walmart. <laughs> And bought a bunch of red fabric. And I had a, an idea of making a hoodie. But then I was like, you know, I, I I have a million hoodies. And I make jackets and sweaters. I need something, um, something to make. I got four yards of red material. And I had full intentions of using the Day of the Dead material for the hood. But, you know, it's getting kind of played out because that's all I make. And I can make... Almost, you know, I could make a lot of stuff. So um, give me some suggestions. I'll grab it. But I got this bright red material. And I, I also purchased um, some Day of the Dead. Some Day of the Dead material because I love the pattern. 
and I cannot stop purchasing Day of the Dead patterns. <laughs> if anyone wants to hop in, let me know. Hey, butterfly on my wall. How's it going? I need to pay attention to the chat. I have completely, almost completely lost my voice. <laughs> but I'm going to keep sewing, as I always say. Another um, exciting day here in the house of sewing. And now I have my Batman voice going on. Because last week I said I was going to pull my brother 535 out. I brought it out, but um, the ring is broken. And I just noticed it because I'm like, why are my stitches always being thrown whenever I use this thing? And it's because it had a crack in it and I didn't even realize it. I made hundreds and hundreds of patches with this machine. So I got my money, my money's worth of it out of it. I'm going to take this off the table for a second because it's so bulky, but this um, antique sewing machine, it's, it's coming along. And it's starting to sound better. It's sounding more smooth. I replaced the belt in, like I said, for a 109-year-old machine. This thing sounds amazing. All right, let me unplug that. How are you doing tonight, butterfly on my wall? Liz, I'm glad that you're back. You know, you have you have quite a dangerous job. You have quite a dangerous job. And it makes me laugh because there's not too many people that would that would take your job. Oh, that that you know, there's not too many people that volunteer. But you actually have a really dangerous job. Thank you, butterfly on my wall. Thank you. No, it's um, it's a combination of moving. I was out in the um, country, but I was out in the mountains, like out in the mountains, trudging around. Um, and uh, I just, I'm a talker. So I felt it. I felt, I felt that I was losing my voice and it just progressively is getting worse and worse. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, it's funny that you would say that. Um, Isaiah is with my ex-wife. And so this is, I'm alone. And this is the first time I've been alone in a long time. <laughs> I think that's another reason why I decided to live stream, even though my voice was gone, was because um, Isaiah is at his mom's house, you know. And it's it's times like this. When I, um, I usually will like, like people are like, how did you make a sweater in one night? It's because my son was with his mother. <laughs> He's usually with me, um, Monday through Friday, but because it's the holiday season, his mom's taking him to go see Christmas lights and you know, they're going to go do the Santa thing. And you know, I'm Mr. Bah humbug. So I encourage them to go out and do Christmas things. <laughs> Because I'm not necessarily the most um, um, Christmas-oriented person. <laughs> oh. Much like my, um, much like my, my Sears Kenmore, these older sewing machines weigh over fifty pounds. Well, over fifty pounds. So it's kind of a shock when you grab it if you haven't been doing curls because they are so heavy. It's actually, it, it's it's kind of funny. That's why I call them clackers. Not only because they make that clack sound, because they are extremely heavy. But that same machine can probably also punch through almost anything. <laughs> Let me take a, a sip of my Earl Grey pot. Oh, man. So let me um, change my camera angle. <laughs> same here. Same here, um, butterfly on my wall. 
I don't, um, I don't let the kid, you know, I don't let Isaiah know how much I dislike Christmas, but I dislike Christmas. <laughs> I know. Um, what's the weather like where you are, Butterfly? Because it's freezing in Portland, Oregon, where Liz, where Liz is, and it's mild to moderate here in, in California. We're about to experience what they are calling an unseasonable Christmas, which just basically means that it might be eighty degrees on Christmas. So we'll be like Australia. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was going to pull this fabric out. The tea is definitely working. Oh, whoops. You know, I'm so rusty with stream yards. It's not even funny. I went back to Walmart today and bought more material. I went there. I went there for another uh, webcam. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And I ended up purchasing more material. Where? Okay, settings. Here we go. But for the first time in a long time, um, Walmart actually had a decent price because most of the um, fabric I buy is like um, 9 to $10 a yard. And so this was much, much more cheap. This, this was like three or four bucks a yard. And um, one of the reasons I started wearing red is because it dawned on me, I never wear red. And it, it wasn't for any affiliation of anything at all. It was just because I grew up watching too much television, I guess. I don't know. But I've um, incorporated red into my clothes, into the things that I do, because, um, you know, I need to expand my horizons, as they say, because... <clears throat> excuse me, all I wear is black clothes. Like, quite literally, all I wear is black clothes. So, I definitely, um, okay. I do have my Batman voice going this evening. So, I bought four yards of this material, and um, I don't know what to do with it. I was thinking a sweatshirt, like I said, but, you know, I have a bunch of sweatshirts. Maybe I should make an undershirt with this. And let's see if you can see the price. I paid $13.76 for four yards, which for on my side of town is a deal. Because where I live, everything is overpriced. They price gouge us for everything here. So I, I feel lucky for paying that price especially at Walmart because they they're slowly raising their prices. All right. So, what should I make? I was thinking an undershirt. I'm thinking about making hodgepodge um overalls with all the scrap pieces I have because I have material that will hold up. You know, but it's like a half a yard or something's cut in a weird shape because I used it in another project, you know? So I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely weighing what I should do with this <sighs> because I buy a lot of fabric and I also own a ton of fabric and I watch a lot of sewing YouTube to get ideas and people have some really cool ideas, but like, I'm not a furry. <laughs> a lot of people who uh, and this is more new age YouTube sewing, but a lot of people weirdly um, go through this furry um, stage where they'll make a hat or they'll make something. And I'm not shaming anybody. I literally have a giant eagle head that I bought at Walmart. You know, I have a giant furry head. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> it's just uh, it makes me laugh. It makes me laugh. You know what? Now that I said it. I might make a furry suit just for views, but I, I feel like I'm too old for something like that. So, like I said, for the first time ever, 
I've received hate mail for my scarf. And, you know, for all the people who are hate watching, I am literally some guy who sits in his garage and sews. <laughs> I love my scarf. And, and, I, and I'm sure it was from somebody who's not necessarily um, from the, the same culture that I am. But I, I really offended quite a few people. Or maybe it was the same person with a couple sock accounts. But um, it, I was definitely getting some hate mail. And it's funny because if you think about it, um, as Westerners, most of the stuff we do is cultural appropriation. And I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm not even trying to be edgy. But at some point, you just have to wear clothes, you know? <laughs> and I really loved this print. And um, it looks good. And I covered it. You know, like I said in my video, I uh, lined it with, it with an old comforter. And, you know, to give perspective of how large an Alaskan king is, I made a cloak with a train, a full jacket, and I still had enough material to completely use stuff this thing um, with the leftovers from the Alaskan king. I have never seen a comforter that big. I have <laughs> It was so big it wouldn't fit in my living room. Because my living room is, is 1970s, so it has a fireplace in it, like has this weird roundabout in it. So it was extremely strange. Exactly, exactly. Um, butterfly on my wall. Uh, and you know, um, I think it's because I have a Twitter. Um, people, someone will watch my video and then they'll go to Twitter hoping that it's me, and it is. It is me because I put all my crazy stuff on Twitter, all my upcycling, and um, I get a lot of hate mail from people, and especially um, when it comes to like metal bands or rock bands, someone will say, what do you know about Slayer? And I, I'll tell them the truth. Like, I don't know. I've only seen them like 19 or 20 times. <laughs> Ah, 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 that's 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 all I know. <laughs> you know, so it's it's one of those things where if you're on the internet, you're gonna offend somebody. You know, you're gonna eventually um, run into a crowd of people who just do not like, do just flat out do not like you. But it's a strange experience receiving hate mail. You know, it's a really strange experience. <laughs> Especially nowadays, like you don't know, I don't, you know, you, you never guess where someone's from or what country they're from, you know, excuse me, because English, English is such a widely spoken language. You never know where someone's coming from. Oh, <laughs> Gen X, so East, uh, you, you should be, um, I should be paying you at this point for the ideas that <laughs> I like it. I like, that's a really good idea. Do you know my, um, my poppy jumpsuit really inspired this weird grease lightning thing inside of me. So I like that idea of the Elvis Presley jumpsuit. I was thinking about making capes. I don't know if anyone knows who Walter Mikado is, but he's this man who <laughs> he was famous in Mexico for being a psychic, but he would make the most flamboyant capes on planet earth. I was thinking about going full Walter Mikado and just making like just full superhero capes with the matching suit. <laughs> Gen X at least, uh, thank you. That's another idea that I'm going to um, follow through on. The poppy, um, I, you know, when I put the collar on that poppy, what was supposed to be coveralls, and um, yeah, <laughs> I am obsessed with Earl Grey, butterfly on my wall. I am absolutely obsessed with Earl Grey. It's, I've been drinking it so long that like when I drink other tea, I'm like, what is this stuff? <laughs> it's one, it's one of those, it's one of those funny things. 
in my Starbucks days, I got hooked on this stuff called Joy, which is basically black and green tea mixed together. But like, you know, I stick to Old Faithful. I I'm still drink um, Earl Grey, sadly. But I call this one Earl Grey Pot because um, it's <laughs> it's let's just say it's legal here. <laughs> So, um, butterfly on my wall. Do you watch Star Trek? I, uh, I, I was obsessed with it in the '90s, and I was also obsessed with uh, Deep Space Nine. And I still watch. I still watch both because of. Um... <laughs> Twinnies makes it an extra bold. Really good. Ex absolutely, absolutely. I'm a huge. Um tea fan you know you can tell how i'm feeling depending on what i'm drinking like if i'm drinking tea i'm not feeling well <laughs> but like on a day like today earl gray is perfect oh man I, the temperature is definitely starting to drop in here i can feel it so moving stinks. So I've been completely procrastinating and I got a few setbacks today and I'm probably going to have to wait a month. So I moved, I, I moved a lot of my stuff over there already. So it, this is, this is going to be interesting. I um, was planning on moving out to the middle of nowhere. Because it gives me more space for my sewing machines. It gives me more space um, just to do all the crazy stuff that I do, you know. And to finally build a dirt bike track. <laughs> I'm kidding, not kidding. Liz, we haven't seen you for a while. I hope you're doing well. I hope your weird stalker didn't come back. <clears throat> so... I'm still kind of shocked that um, that my <laughs> that my scarf has picked so many fights that like is, that I'm wearing it right now on purpose. It's just weird to me. My husband has always been a sci-fi fan. My kids think that they are related to Captain Picard, D Space Nine, and I am obsessed with uh, Babylon Five. Babylon Five is is my show. And I quote um, Vircato all the time, all the time. What is that quote? It's um, no one ever makes history. Your only real hope is to survive it. People think I'm so deep and profound when I say that, but really it's, um, it's me quoting Babylon 5. <laughs> People swear that I'm like, they're like, oh, that's so deep. I'm, I'm quoting uh, Viracato. <laughs> I like the Elvis jumpsuit. I really like that idea. I have the pattern for the, the um, weird jackets. I think I could turn the, um, the suit jacket into that. It's, it's one of my favorite quotes because it is true. You know, People always go, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to make history. Most of us hope that we survive it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And because of the internet, I still watch these shows. And that's the beauty because, you know, modern television is not necessarily my thing. I'm going to go throw on my other jacket real quick. Oh, okay. That's better. <laughs> I had to put on the warm coat. Do you know what's funny is that my scarf gets me hate mail and I walk around with this thing in public and people say, hey, that's a really cool vest. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's funny how offended people get online over the most trivial thing, you know. 
I root for people. I want people to be successful and happy, you know? I don't go around, I don't go around the internet um, looking for drama, even though it's there and it will find you. <laughs> oh, wow. You got me with that red jumpsuit. What about a red leisure suit? Like um, Larry walking to the legal, the regal beagle wearing a red suit. I, um, I watched a lot of three's company as a kid, <laughs> but I'm, I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely leaning towards a red jumpsuit now. That's not a bad idea at all. <laughs> I'm going to make a T-Birds um, coveralls too because I watched Grease way too many times as a kid. So I have to, you know, make at least one T-Birds thing or the next leather jacket that I buy, I'm going to um, put T-Birds on the back. <laughs> it's been it's been a while. It, it, that's actually something that I've wanted to do and for everything that I've made in here. Um, I think it's time to make a T-Bird's uh, jumpsuit. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Oh, whoops. I'm like, I'm looking at my phone and um, the chat. They're going at two different speeds. The, I love the jumpsuit idea. I think that, um, do you know what's funny? It's not rare for someone to walk around wearing coveralls where I live. So, you know, nobody would flinch if I walked around wearing a red uh, jumpsuit. Well, at least on this side of town, nobody would even react. I'm definitely going to do that. That's not a bad idea at all. That's why I made the scarf because I've made a bunch of jackets and I'm thinking about quilting, but I'm not necessarily a quilter. I, 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 every once in a while I'll make a quilt, but it's not something that I, um, that I do all the time. And I consider quilting addicting. Like every time I make a quilt, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to add one more one. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. And then it's, this I have a huge quilt over here that I never finished. It just was never ending. And I kept on adding fabric, adding fabric. <laughs> interesting. Absolutely interesting. See, Gen X Soista has a great idea. That's better than the people that have been telling me to go stuff myself. But like I said, if you're, you know, if you're public online, people are going to hate you for it. <laughs> so um, another question I have for anyone who owns a, um, a brother PE 535. The ring inside of this is broken. And so is that the reason why it's not throwing um, good stitches anymore? Should I just, um, you know, knuckle up and buy a new, uh, um, buy a new ring for it? Because um, I feel like this thing should not be um, messing up as much as it is. It's only a year old, you know? So I'm extremely curious to see, um, you know, should I just buy a new hoop for it? Should I throw the whole thing in the trash? I'm kidding. I would never do that. But the machine has become semi-useless, you know, and it's weird to me that it's not working. You know what? Instead of talking about it, let's make a test patch and see what happens. I have a giant mess 
of um, if you ever want to see where bobbins go to hide, I have a giant mess of bobbins. <laughs> Some people are um, extremely organized. I'm one of those people who has a plate of bobbins next to their uh, <laughs> next to their sewing machine. It seems like that would be an easy fix. I agree. I really, you know, what's funny. Um, lately, I've been making a bunch of patches and I'm like, what's wrong with this machine? It's just, it's been a giant mess. It's just been a mess. And I think that's the problem. It's the hoop. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I always um, have plates around for my cups, but as you can see, the cup is nowhere near a plate. <laughs> and so it's, um, it's my bobbin. So it's become my bobbin plate because they were supposed to be for all of my coffee cups that I always have in here, but I end up putting it on my mat anyways. <laughs> It just depends on, um, well, there's my heater. That's how I know the temperature is dropping. All right, let's pull out a bobbin and let's see. I have a um, bad feeling that's the problem, but I'm always for, um, you know, finding out if that really is the problem. All right. Do you know what's funny? With my my 109-year-old sewing machine is less complicated than, um, than my brother PE 535. Or I should say less frustrating. You know... That's not a bad idea, butterfly on my wall. I have quite a few unstable bobbins myself. All right. I'm going to load this and see what happens. It's you know I don't I don't want this machine to go to waste. I love my um, five thirty five. I've made a ton of patches. I've made some really cool patches on this machine. So I'm trying not to let it die because what happens, especially with electronic machines, something will go out and then you replace it or you put it in the corner and you're like I don't want to deal with it, you know. So I'm trying not to let this machine just fade away. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Never a boring day in Portland, Oregon. I'm glad that I'm glad that you're okay. See, like I was saying, like being a security guard is a really unappreciated job. It's an extremely unappreciated job. <laughs> Portland, Oregon is not for the faint of heart. Strange. I can't find my backing, so I'm going to use an old sheet because <laughs> I can't find the backing. You don't have to apologize for saving someone's life 
a drunk girl playing on the train tracks is worth a lot more than um, me me griping on the internet. <laughs> All right, where is that material that I've been hoarding forever? I usually do not purchase these uh, um, for patches, but I couldn't resist. I recycle everything, so I make, um, I recycle my patches, everything, but I decided to, um, you know, go out on a limb and buy this just to see the quality of it. But I'm definitely going to replace the white with the red. You know, when people thread sewing machines and they make it look easy, it's because they've done it a hundred thousand times. And so I, I, people always say, oh man, you made it look easy. It's because I do it all the time. It's a skill that you... Hey, skits! If you want to hop in, I'll throw the um, link in the chat. Hopefully, that's the link. I, I have uh, lost my voice. <laughs> and I could use your help if you're not busy. Grandkids are the best. Absolutely. My mom uh, spoils Isaiah. Absolutely just spoils him. Oh, man. ha. <laughs> It was worse earlier. It was way worse. I my voice is bombing though. It is bombing hard. <laughs> I'm gonna screenshot that one. <laughs> I get to do my Batman voice. At least I'm not wearing hockey pads. <laughs> Dancing on the train tracks is dangerous. Is extremely dangerous. Oh man, did I just mess up that thread? I did. But I have this stuff. You know, between Singer and Coates and Clark, they should be paying me. For as much as I um, endorse these people or buy their you or use their products, especially Coates and Clark. <laughs> but I think we all buy Coates and Clark, don't, or, don't we? Or as some subsidiary that thereof. I, I'm convinced it's all the same company, anyways. Was was she like that sounds like someone who's extremely intoxicated. So when she's dancing on the train tracks, did she have headphones on? Did she like, gosh, for people who don't know, there are trains who go through the city in downtown Portland. So you can walk across the street and be on train tracks. But, you know, for 99.9% .9 of the population, you will hear the train. <laughs> Just threading. I'm just threading the brother PE 535. I'm really interested to see if my um, if my tape solution works or not. I don't think it is. Scotch tape. It's it's not like Windex. It's not the solution for everything. <laughs> oh, excuse me. But I'm really interested to see.
She wasn't wearing headphones, but we have had several very fast Amtrak trains that drive through here, and I was afraid that she was going to get mowed over. Yeah, they don't slow down. Portland is old school. Portland, Oregon, like the trains run through the middle of the city. Quite literally. Quite literally, they run through the middle of the city. <laughs> I think, I'm trying to think. Um, I've seen the Dallas train yards, but I, I like in older cities, trains run through the middle of the city. Port, Portland is very much like that. Like, you would never get that here in Los Angeles. Like, we have trains that run through the city, but they're on their own tracks. And, you, and if you run up on them, you're crazy. <laughs> so that's just, that's crazy. Someone running on the, on the, um, someone running on the tracks is crazy. <laughs> The grandkids are, are the ones who always get spoiled and then sent home back to the parents. <laughs> That's the beauty of it, you know. My my mom is so nice to my son, and I look at her like, who are you? What are you doing? Did, were you abducted by aliens? But it's because um, it's because he goes home. <laughs> I can't believe I showed my plate of bobbins. It's actually kind of embarrassing of how disorganized I am because like, like I have, um, all my, all my singer power chords together. I have all my brother power chords, all my older power chords are together. And then I have a very dis disorganized plate of bobbins, <laughs> but, but I have quite a few colors here. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so I have a question um, for people who sew. When you throw, when you thread a sewing machine, do you use the needle threader or the automatic needle threader, or do you do it yourself? It's just, a, it's just a, a question that I have. All right, perfect, perfect. <laughs> well, it, I get tired of threading them all the time, and I had an automatic bobbin threader, and I burnt it out. I had an old school automatic bobbin threader, and that thing burnt out on me. I was kind of embarrassed. I need to get one from um, Amazon, actually, because they, they have some really cool modern ones. Yes, I have an automatic threader on the machine. I use it. You bet. You're so... <laughs> <laughs> I love that reply. It just, it really... Um, I, I, you know, uh, I, I'm goofy. I, I thread it manually every time. Do you know the first time I saw one of those on a sewing machine, I was like, what is this contraption? <laughs> and I mean like an old school sewing machine, like a um, touch and sew. Because that I, I believe, a little singer history, I believe the touch and sew was the first American sewing machine to have the automatic threader. Well, that's what they claim. <laughs> I've watched their commercial so many times. I'm quoting uh, facts from the 1970s. <laughs> ah, it started quite a few fights recently. Sorry, I'm talking about a comment that people can see. It has started a quite a few fights, and I think, um, I think, I think it's a troll. 
I think someone's trolling me and they're pretending to be African American. They're they're and they're not. And there's you know, I if you if I can't see your if I can't see your picture and if I don't know who you are, I think you're a troll. You know, and this particular person, um there they've sent me quite a few messages and then it'll it, I'll get a message from somebody else, but it, it'll be almost the same conversation I had with the other person, you know. Or they'll be commenting on some snappy comment I made or something, you know. It's hilarious. It is hilarious. But like I said, if you're on the internet, you're going to offend somebody. Somebody is going to tell you how much they don't like you. Especially nowadays. Especially nowadays. And Let's be real. Twitter. Ha I didn't think Twitter can get any worse. Twitter has become a dumpster fire. Every weirdo wannabe. Like I'm literally a dude who posts clothes and I comment on British politics because I don't sleep at night. And I watch um, Sky News at 11 o'clock at night all the way till almost four in the morning. You know, so I know more about their politics sometimes than, than ours. And it amazes me how um, someone will try to come at me. Like, no matter what I do, it's it's offensive to somebody, you know? <laughs> Not knowing that you have the power to walk away. You know, you have the power to turn it off. <laughs> but like I said, no matter what you do on the internet, you're going to um, offend somebody. Or they're going to tell you how much you offended them. And I unraveled this the wrong way because I'm trying to not get it on my T. Oh, joint down. Yeah, I, I think it's a mega troll. I think it's somebody who's just like, you know what? My problem is, is that um, I didn't get, um, I didn't get into like the internet until I was almost in my 40s. And so there's a lot of things, a lot of nuances where I'm like, is this person for real? And they're not <laughs> because I go outside and look at the trees every once in a while. <laughs> you know, I like to go out in nature. I like to go out on hikes and that's not even like the, Oh, I like to go for long walks on the beach. No, I like to be outside sometimes, you know, <laughs> it's good to unplug every once in a while. Recently, um, Tobin Templeman made a comment about how he took a break from YouTube. And I was like, you know what? I need to take a break from YouTube. <laughs> because people, um, I don't know. I just don't get it anymore. But we live in the world of um, everything offends me, you know. All right. Cut this test piece off. And for anyone just tuning in, um, I am not doing a Batman impersonation. I lost my voice, and it's the plight of a loud mouth. I talk a lot. I lose my voice all the time. I don't know if it's laryngitis, but I get it often because, um, you know, I, <laughs> I live life at 100 miles an hour, so I lose my voice all the time. It's not ne something necessarily uh, new. But I sound like Batman. <laughs> I'm extremely curious to see how this patch comes out. And I'll know, I'll know right away because um, when this machine starts throwing stitches, it really starts throwing stitches.
Oh, those echoes trip me out. When I hear echoes in my house, I'm like, who is it? But it's the microphones bouncing off of each other. I didn't mute. I didn't mute the microphone in the um, middle bedroom. So I'm like, who is in my house? <laughs> you were you were about to get a show, a real show live. <laughs> oh man, don't break into people's houses. <laughs> All right, so back to making a patch. I'm so used to um, my son always being here that like when I'm alone, if I hear any noise, I'm like, oh, that's the boogeyman. <laughs> All right. I am really curious to see how this comes out because um, I have a bad feeling that the broken hoop is the entire reason that this machine is no longer performing like it was. And, you know, people talk trash. People will say, oh, I don't like a brother fi PE 535 because there's so many others. I've I made all of these patches on a brother um, PE 535 and I haven't even programmed it yet. I'm using the base settings and I've made some amazing patches on this thing. So, you know, it's not it's not uh, what you use all the time. It's how you use it. And I'm not above saying that I take tutorials online. Like for my Viking Emerald, I took a class, um, not a class, but um, uh, what is it? Oh, Made, Made to Sew. She's a huge YouTuber in the UK. She just happened to buy the same sewing machine that I bought. She taught me how to use my machine. You know, I know my Viking inside and out because... Um, she basically had a class on how to use your, it was literally uh, Vikings for beginners, you know, and I had just bought that machine and it was, it was um, perfect, absolutely perfect for what I needed. So I'm not above saying I still ask for help if I don't know what I'm doing. That's why I'm really curious to see if this works. Oh, thank you. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? It's going all right, brother. It's going all right. Awesome, awesome. So, not to make you continue to talk, but uh, no, well, why? What, what? What? Laryngitis? Sick or just yelling? Yelling at people? Laryngitis. I get it all the time because I have a. Um, I'm a talker, and at my job, I do have to scream over animals, um, tractors, and stuff. You know, so I. It's just it's something that happens all the time. I lose my voice all the time. That's one of those I, weird. Oh, go ahead. It, it reminded me of like uh, in uh, in basic training, you know, you got a lot of you know eighteen year old kids who you know, go around and they're not necessarily yelling all the time, and then they go to constantly screaming at the top of their lungs. So like the first week, you know, or the first couple of days, they're like loud, 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 and after that, everyone's like trying to yell, but everyone's just so squeaky. It's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. There, um, Isaiah watches this guy who's an ex drill instructor. And he's like, don't be a drill instructor. <laughs> he He's a grown man and he has to project his voice because he's lost his voice from years of yelling at me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's it's repeated trauma to, to the larynx, right? Like, exactly. Over and over. To heal. That's what I feel like I'm doing to myself because like, like um, if you look back at a live stream um two years ago around this time i lost my voice if you look at a live stream from a year ago around this time i lost my voice it's like seasonal almost oh interesting oh you know it's so sad are you are you allergic to anything uh no i mean just like uh, seasonal allergies uh and bee venom <laughs> I'm allergic to tomatoes, to exotic spices, anything that doesn't that anything that does taste good. That's not from America. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, ate a that sucks. I ate a, a green tamale in Mexico and needed an EpiPen. Good God! 
I didn't know I was allergic to cactus. <laughs> Good God, man. <laughs> That's what my cousin said in Spanish. What's wrong with you? What is wrong my with Dios you? Mio. <laughs> <laughs> That's a generational thing. Ideos meal is definitely a generational thing. Like I say, Kevod body dod because I got that from um, Ricky Ricardo. Oh, oh there's my a God, certain Lucy. Yeah, so they're like like people that speak Spanish. Like I can tell what your parents used to yell at you based on what you <laughs> say. I can tell, <laughs> especially uh, native Spanish speaking people. Oh, um, oh, sorry, but if I remember, well, I just saw that. I love made to sew. She literally um, taught me how to use my machine and not break it. I bought a, um, a Viking. Um, oh, whoops. Dang. I hope you carry an EpiPen with you. I do. But Pharma Bro, if you want to get political, Pharma Bro ruined it for everybody because you have, you, you have to be rich to have an EpiPen now. <laughs> I, I'm super lucky. I get mine from the VA. Yeah, you know, but yeah, aren't they like like a grand each or something like that? This is ridiculous. Five years ago, they were um, considered expensive at a hundred dollars each. Same one is eight hundred now because of Pharma Bro, and he went to prison, and EpiPens are still high. Yeah, like, like well, we, we can make him suffer for what he did, but uh, <laughs> you you still guys are still fucked. Peasants, peasants, peasants. you know. <laughs> so I. I I always jokingly tell my son, like, hey man, don't lose that thing. That thing's as much it's worth as much as a Honda Accord. <laughs> <laughs> For real though. My my dad, um I my dad had hearing aids. Each hearing aid was 1,400. That's so funny that we're actually talking about this because look at my shirt. It says, you know, ask me about guaranteed health care. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we now know where to go at the Godless Sewing Channel. Skip Scratcher is wearing this shirt. You know, when he when he passed, I was like, I remember telling my mom, like, dude, that's like, you know, that's a couple grand worth of equipment. You know, like, what are you going to do? She gave it back to the audiology department and they give it to people who can't afford it. So I like that. Nice. That's, that's, that's a good policy. And it's Kaiser, yeah. too. I was really surprised. It's Kaiser. Wow. HMOs, like... You most have a heart. <laughs> I think it's this one particular person because she knows that, like, how is it? And, and you know, how is it that at a hospital a bedpan can be eight hundred bucks, right? Or, or like getting um, an IV is a grand and a half. You know, a what is wrong of aspirin that <laughs> cost you twenty five bucks? They. Uh, it, you know, young parents always take their kids to the hospital. You know, new parents, you know, they charge you. I consider it dummy tax. Because they're going to give your kid an aspirin, a pat on the head, and say, give your kid some water. <laughs> and then charge you four grand for it. I, I remember as a kid, my, uh, I didn't understand that concept. Granted, I was very young at the time. But I was, I was feeling, you know, very sick and, you know, hyperventilating. Now, looking back, I think I was just having, like, a panic attack or something. And, you know, finally I convinced my dad, you know, like, to take me to the emergency room because he, he's, like, he understands, you know, that I'm not – it's not an emergency. And it, it cost him an arm and a leg, and we weren't exactly rolling in it. But finally we get there, and I just remember the nurse, like, said, she's like, just slow down your breathing. I'm the only one here that can panic. And I slowed down and instantly I just felt better. And they're like, well, that cost like 300 bucks just, just to have her tell me to calm the fuck down. Yeah. <laughs> they're still like that. It's even worse now. Do you know with, with clinics, um, they make you pay up front. <laughs> oh my God. And now, and then you won't leave. And then you can't leave until you pay their other fee. So like if you, um, it's like, a, and I live in Southern California. So keep in mind the fees are high. It's like 150 bucks just to, just to go in the clinic. And then if you get x-rays, that's extra money. If you get administered any medicine, you got to pay for it. Like you end up paying more at the clinic than if you had health insurance. You know, it's, ridiculous. It, it's crazy here. We, we have such a broken healthcare system here. 
And you know what's sad is that like Medi-Cal used to be one of the greatest in America. And now it's like get in line, punk. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, although to, props to Medi-Cal and uh, or I guess Decal or whatever, uh, they, they have greatly improved their, their uh, services available to, you know, and they used to be just like, oh, that hurts. Yeah, we're going to pull it. Now they got, you know, crowns and things like that. And so they've greatly improved it. But as you're right, though, it's it's our our infrastructure, like the, the plan behind Medi-Cal is fine. Our infrastructure just isn't there to back it up. I get in arguments with my son all the time. Like certain ideals are amazing. Like if you, like certain things on paper, you're like, wow, like that's going to help everybody. But who's there to actually implement it and not steal? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, know, we need better <laughs> hospitals, bigger hospitals, you know, because population is doing nothing but going up. Yeah. And if we're going to provide health care to this raising population, we need the hospitals and the emergency rooms, the clinics, the and not just for profit. You know, there, there shouldn't you shouldn't be able to profit off of somebody else's misery. Absolutely. It was great seeing you, Butterfly, on my wall. Have a great night. Um, you Good know what? You, I'm going to be around next week because um, my whole moving thing got pushed back. So I'll be oh. here next Monday. Is next Monday the day after Christmas? It is. Yeah. And Liz, it's great to see you, Butterfly, on my wall. Liz is the only other human being who is allergic to everything like I am. <laughs> Her and I, we talk about this all the time. Like, I'm allergic to certain toothpaste. I'm allergic to, like, yeah, I got to read the labels. Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I just got to avoid bees or any anything that likes to bite and sting me. And it really <laughs> fucks me up. Do you know, um, at my job, because it's out in the country, um, I you know, people tell all the time, like, oh, if, if you see a baby scorpion, you have to avoid it. I was um, in the can one time and a baby scorpion was, was running towards me. <laughs> it's coming I, right for us. I wear big boots, but they're like, those things are real. <laughs> oh yeah. I fortunately not too many scorpions up here in Northern California. <laughs> I live on like, like the, um, you know, Southern California is really weird. Because the topography topography of it is mainly desert, damn near to the ocean. You would never know because it's just a, a world of, of uh, city blocks everywhere. We just pump so much water down there. We're not like Arizona. Arizona um, has no water and they get it from everywhere else. Yeah, I mean, pens yeah. are real. They're, they're unreal. Do you know the crazy thing about um, Arizona is that we get power from them, you know, but they get water from um, anywhere that anyone that'll give it to them. Oh, speaking of power, uh, did you hear about the, the cold fusion uh, uh, breakthrough? Yes. And I'm just old enough to now say, where's my starship? <laughs> All right. All right. Soon. This is the beginning. No, because in Enterprise, in Enterprise, they talk about um, how the first ships were cold fusion. All right. I don't like, I, hey, send me and all my sewing machines out to space. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go colonize uh, Kepler 220B. I may not be alive when we get there, but my, my ancestors will, you, you know, my inheritors will be. <laughs> and I'll have a shit ton of sewing done. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Trusty A podcast, hop in. The link is uh in the chat. I'll throw it in again. Uh, yeah, in. Liz, I, I do a lot of stuff with uh uh Cal or Karen Cal California Care Force and uh do a lot of stuff for uh just to get um universal health care in California and you know the, the nation as a whole. That is one thing about California. We have a ton of programs here to help people, you know, but like you said, it's the infrastructure behind it <clears throat> because a lot of people love the regional center. I think it's crap. It's 
one step above autism speaks and like i don't know how they've allowed one organization to take responsibility for everyone's kids i don't like that i don't like how much power the regional center has and they don't do anything but that's what more of they a do? they're a facilitator they're 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 facilitators for special needs anything so for a child all the way up to an adult but they get paid lots of money to interject themselves. And once your kid reaches a certain age and doesn't get certain um, um, certain programs, they're kind of useless. So I, I'm not saying scrap the whole thing, but they're useless to a certain group of people. I gotcha. They need to kind of tighten up their charter or whatever. Kind of. They for it's anything that's forced scares me. You know, so it's not that, that you're forced to have your kid at the regional center. It's just that um, you're freaking, um, yeah, you are in a way. Like, if you want any special services, you have to go through them, you know? Okay. It's just, it's ridiculous. California is just a pile of paperwork. <laughs> this is true. How's it going? What's going on, Ape? The strong silent type. Do you know? I don't really Shit, I thought I was unmuted. My bad. I was all, is this thing on? Oh. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, no, it's been an interesting evening. I just uh, spent over an hour talking with some Muslims and some Christians. And then, yeah, I had, had dinner with my mom, my little brother. My little brother got a keyboard. We were talking music theory and stuff. So, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. Heck yeah. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. Yeah, I was uh, learning a little bit about Islam. <laughs> Before I go off about Islam, uh, <laughs> I'm drinking Earl Grey pot. Uh, tea. But it's Earl, Earl Grey it's, hot. Well, this is Earl Grey pot because I have a bunch of my um, my homegrown wrapped in a coffee filter in there, and it's really working. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I. It's something. Uh, if you make like real natural pot tea, it smells like burnt corn. So I always add Earl. I add Earl Grey to it. The, the bergamot's a real. Uh, I never thought about that flavor. I, I think I infused like actual green tea with weed, but that was like you know as far as I went with that. That was pretty good. Uh, it's it it really kicks, and this is stuff I grew in my backyard. This is like. Uh, and now it's swag because it's been sitting in a jar forever, you know. And right. it, it, it kicks more than if I smoked it; it would just be a big cough, you know. Have you ever uh, like boiled like a glass pipe like on the stove and then strained out the you know like the resin crud and drank that? No, but this, that's how I clean um, my complicated pipes that have hooks on them. Uh, I mean, I it, it, it'll taste like dirt, but you just down it real quick. But that'll get you high as fuck, man. It will. I the shit um, out of the I, resin. I boil this because it has an elbow. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I don't know. You know, because I can't smoke resin anymore. I um, I ch well, I've shown my big Pee Wee Herman resin ball. I know I have. Have I? Yeah, I, I th think you showed it on my so. stream I, like a, a I, yeah. while ago. Yeah. You want to see his kids crash? Here? It's tight. I though. would like to see. It's probably it. bigger now. <laughs> this is because I can't smoke resin. I collect it now. I'm gonna get it. You're you're of the age. Did you watch Pee Wee Herman's um, Clubhouse? Yeah, uh, I saw I saw the reruns. Yeah, I remember the movie when he did the last movie. <laughs> oh, that shit made me cry. Yeah. Um. So Pee Wee had a giant ball of um, of saran wrap. And he'd, he'd chew a piece of gum and he'd add to this giant every week. And so this is my resin ball. Good God, man. It's huge. It, my hand, hold on, let me. My hand is humongous. It's huge. God. You could hurt somebody. It's almost fastball <laughs> size. Yeah. The this only is, way weed's gonna kill somebody. <laughs> you beam in the head with that. I'm thinking about buying a hookah and ruining it. Just, just put it on top. 
<laughs> I really am. I because I I don't think my my ex wife uh, told me I should set it on fire and sit in the shed. <laughs> yeah, and just like build it like a like an incense holder or something. Just spark it up and hotbox the place because it will there get you go. ripped. You know, like and and. And if you tell me you haven't smoked resin, I'll call you a liar to your face. <laughs> oh no, I just smoke resin all the time. I have to. I'm I'm a scraper. I like I was a scraper, so like nowadays not so much because I don't I, I I dab rather than smoke, so it's not so much a, a resin per se. Yeah. Reclaim, but uh well, how I is that? Either. I don't have the lungs. I honestly I wish I had the lungs for that. It it hits, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It does. It's great. Like rather than, you know, sit down and have to smoke a joint or two, I can do a dab and, and I'm, you know, good in 30 seconds. You know, that's why I, um, I smoke so much of what I call the old man that when I buy top shelf, I'll take one hit and I'm like, Oh, let me put that down. Let me put that down. Cause it just slammed me. I so can't, yeah, you got this earlier. I was out of weed for a couple of days. This one's, uh, Orange gas, cool. twenty six. Sorry. Oh I'm no! It's it cool. out. Oh no! It's all right. I'm you know, I'm the I'm the sewing and smoking stream. <laughs> it's pretty good. I, yeah, I just signed up at this place. They were like, "All right, we'll give you a." The second pre-roll for a dollar. So like, cool. So I got this one, and then I got some uh, some cookies. So nice. I miss the pot food. I miss the pot food. <laughs> I was telling you, um, I had a goldfish problem. I went to this place that had. Um, hold on, let me make you big. And they had <coughs> marijuana goldfish. I was hooked on those things. I smoke infused stuff. Those are awesome. That looks dank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, yep. That's a <laughs> good night waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, when I when I do smoke, uh, I typically smoke the infused. I got hooked on the moon rock joints, but they were kicking my lungs. They were kicking the hell out. I had to stop smoking them. The thing I found is they get so there's they get so resonated at the base, like you start eating the stuff, you can't even smoke yeah. the whole thing. Like I always chuck it in a pipe towards the end, cause for the same reason, cause it's so caked, it's so yeah. caked. <coughs> Man, smoking sure is helping my my voice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment. I wasn't gonna do the live stream, but then like my ex wife picked up my son, and I was like. Oh fuck! Who am I gonna yak at? Yeah, I talk <laughs> I like, to. I'll do a live stream. I mean, we need somebody just to do this every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna be so mad. He's probably watching right now, and he's like, ah. Hi <laughs> <I> there. <do. laughs> no, my my ex wife really hadn't seen my channel, so I showed it to her, and she's like, oh. You're actually doing something positive. <laughs> <laughs> no, my ex um, found my channel and I had my older, my old channel and I had kind of talked about our relationship a little bit, you know, I didn't like, you know, dox her, mention her name or anything like that. It was like, this is one of my exes, blah, blah, blah. And she got pissed. She called me. She's like, you can't talk about me on your channel. <laughs> Like, nobody knows who you are. You just chill the fuck out. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. About two years ago, I, my ex-wife said the same thing to me. Last Saturday, I need to post those pictures. She's like, post a picture of my jacket. She's like, look at this jacket my grandma made. And I'm like, oh, the difference two years has made. Now she <laughs> wants to be on my channel, you know? Yeah. It was an awesome jacket. It was dang. Her grandma, <laughs> her grandma was living in the future. Like it was, it was, it's awesome jacket, you know, but so, so, um, last night I watched a video on the trusty ape. Was it on your trusty ape channel? Possibly. I did. About I think moving, I did a couple last night. Yeah. About moving. You got me. You, I had a total chasing Amy moment. I have played myself for women so much. What do you need to know? 
So you're moving, okay? <laughs> no, no, I'm not definitely doing this. I'm just talking about thinking about doing it. You know, I'm like. So yeah. is somebody who's done the um, <laughs> who's done the chasing Amy or the Goodwill hunting. I literally got in a car and drove cross country. You know. Um, but it's like it's not like I I didn't like just meet this person like I've known I've known this person like for several years we just we we weren't <clears throat> we were out of contact for a couple of years but but we we've, we've we've known each other for a good like five years now four or five years so is it is it something because um, when you said uh, oh man I don't know if I could live in cold weather you got me because I moved to cold weather for a woman. And, and I had to learn. I I looked like an idiot for about six months because I'd come with my big puffy coat on, six layers with a jacket, hoodie, with a beanie on, with earmuffs. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and that's what I, that's what I you know it's one of my big hangups. Other than the distance from my kids, would be uh, yeah, it would be the the cold weather. I'm like, man, I would have to be like a bear for like six months out of the year or something. You know, I just like wouldn't go outside, work remotely or some shit. The human you know? body, the human body adapts, but you'll be you'll be shaking in your boots for a while. Right. <laughs> Skids, you have you gone from extreme weathers to where you're like, holy cow, I'm in Alaska. What am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, well, definitely, definitely heat. Uh, you know, when uh, when we got to Iraq, it was like 130. But uh, yeah, I've been to Alaska um, a couple of times to go hunting, but. Um, I think there's one time this is extreme. It was uh, in North Carolina. It, one day, you know, we went out to go to, you know, for a field exercise and it was 70, 80 degrees out. And we're like, okay, you know, we're not going to need to, you know, bring too much cold, cold weather stuff. And so we get there and that night, just a cold snap came in and, and it was well below freezing. And actually, some of our guys got frostbite. And I'm like, it was funny. I was just telling the story the other day with someone else. And like, we used to, like, we were sitting down there complaining how it was, you know, 60 degrees out yep. and a little chilly, yep. you know, and we're like, man, we used to like be able to take some much harsher heat. What the hell happened to us? Yeah. I'm sitting up there like, oh man, it's 100 degrees out and I'm dying. I'm like, man, you used to like ruck march 125, <laughs> like, you know, full IBA. But now you're like, dude, give me a minute. Same. I've acclimated back to California weather. Like when I lived up north, man, like I got used to it. I wasn't wearing shorts when it rained, but I got used to it, you know? I mean, I've never lived in that type of weather. I've visited, I visited, visited Arkansas in the wintertime, Colorado in the wintertime, Alaska in the springtime. But th that was always like, you know, I was, I was pretty much indoors. I didn't have to go out into the elements for anything, you know? So it was, it was pretty limited exposure. So like I've never really acclimated my body outside of like mostly Northern California weather, you know, like <laughs> just lifelong. So. You know, it's funny. I moved to Stockton with my ex-wife and, and I considered Stockton cold. <laughs> I think yeah. the coldest that I've been though is I believe it or not, was in Maine. Uh, we went up there to go, you know, hunting. We were in the, uh, yeah. uh, it was in the middle of winter and it was negative three and then we were on the coast in a boat so we were getting splashed with water huge windshield because we're going you know we're in a speedboat you know on the uh, going out to these places and i just remember just being in a little ball with all my you know everything i'm like i don't even like duck honey this much <laughs> <laughs> uh, i think the hottest place i've ever been in my life was the dallas texas airport and I never left the airport. And even in the airport, it was like 110 degrees. Like, you're like, what the you, fuck? Do they not have air conditioning in this place? I know what you're <laughs> saying. Like, you know it's hot when you're when you're standing next to the glass and you can feel the heat coming through the glass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was on a transfer. I was a kid. I was flying by myself. I had to wait there for a transfer. So, yeah, it was just blistering hot. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the reason I say that is because um, – I've done some crazy stuff for love. I've done some really idiotic, like, um, what's that movie? Jerry Maguire <laughs> running through the airport, just idiotic stuff, you know? I feel like that's the story of my life. Well, like, you know, because I, I, uh, I got with my daughter's mom 
as soon as I turned 18, actually a couple of months before I turned 18, we moved to Sacramento together and I had never lived in Sacramento. I, I knew a couple of people uh, who had moved down there and we were from Reading. And so she was like, yeah, I got a place for us. Like, you ready? Let's go. We had only been dating for like maybe a month. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, I just, I was like, yeah, fuck it. I don't know what I'm going to do when I turn 18. Might as well do this. I already dropped out of high school. Like, I get, you know, we're going to get away from, you know, like the uh, tweakers we, we, you know, met because uh, we, we had met through friends of ours who were into drugs and uh, we were like, yeah, we're all going to move to SAC. We're going to get clean and all that stuff. And kind of worked out for a while, but um, yeah, you know, it was a crazy, crazy experience. I was just on the uh, the other day. Yeah. I haven't been there in a couple of years, man. I've, um, <laughs> I used to take Greyhounds, Greyhounds a lot. And in downtown SAC, they would tell you, don't leave the Greyhound station. It got so bad that they moved the Greyhound station out to like an island in Sacramento. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much what it is now. It's like a little compound almost. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that it's still there. I have um, crazy memories of Northern California. Every really? time I would stop, every time I'd get gas and weed, I would buy a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually, time. I've never been to weed. One of my good friends uh, from Reading who also got clean, got his life together, but he moved out to weed. And uh, yeah, we, we're still in contact uh, and he moved, finally moved out there with his uh, wife. And I was like, man, one of these days I'm going to take a trip out to weed, man. <laughs> I like have a, a right there. The stoner. It's hidden. It's a hidden gem in California. It's basically a logging town that got famous because its name is weed. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so they make a ton of money off of tourism because idiots like me go there. I, you know, take selfies. They have a giant sign that says weed, California. Well, yeah. yeah and they've now so they've totally people. exploited it. I've seen videos where they've got like the, you know, all the hemp signs out and shit. It's cool. Oh yeah. And now that pot's legal, they have some of the best weed in the world up there. You know, weed from weed. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, a long time ago, I went to a pot shop in Vancouver, Canada, and 80% of the marijuana was from Northern California. And I remember That's thinking, right. I had to go all the way to Canada to smoke pot from California. Well, as it turns out, um, so you know, uh, Mendocino County, where there's like Fort Bragg, um, kind of stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of rural land out there and uh, during, you know, during the, the dry season or whatever, the summer months, it's actually like really good for growing weed out there. And they actually legalized it a long time before as a county. Um, so they were able to grow. It was some, it was like five plants per person or something like that was what they had allowed by law, but it just wasn't even enforced. So a lot of those people up in Mendo have been growing for, you know, up to our like Arcata and stuff that's always been a hot spot. And, um, but they also have a lot of cartel growers who go out there now and go into like the state parks oh. and, um, like forge little plant plantations out there too. So they've, you can find, you know, national geographic videos of those busts and stuff like, which I think is pretty crazy. Northern Cal is the only place I've ever been where I've seen, um, homeless people with trash bags of marijuana. That's more humble. <laughs> humble was crazy. Humble was just like, and they're smoking good shit compared to people down here. Like we're smoking last year stuff compared to people in Northern California. For real. Yeah, and just amazing. Just thinking about the pure, j just based off of you know THC content. Like swag today would be you know flooring people back in the seventies. You know? <laughs> True. Uh, I, you know, um, some of that top shelf stuff puts me out. I, yeah. um, I overdosed on mushrooms and sometimes Bro -bro. I'll smoke something and it'll, I'll get a flashback. I'll get Damn. like that, that body high. And I'm like, Whoa, what's in this stuff? You know, <laughs> 
That stuff's hardcore, dude. It it depends. Like, I don't I don't smoke top shelf unless it's on sale. <laughs> I don't front. I buy in bulk. I'm like, I want I want fourteen of that and seven of that and seven of that. That's right. They they limit uh, to an ounce, right? Yeah, but you can buy an ounce a day. And if you're smoking that much, <laughs> if you're smoking an ounce a day, get help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I told you the story, um, but I got when I got recently busted, they busted me for having an ounce of shake um, and some hash. And some, I had some buds on top of that. But the ounce they busted me with was an ounce of shake. And I'm not even sure it was an ounce. I argued that with them. And they haven't, like... Um, they haven't actually pressed charges on me, but they kept they kept the weed in the shake, which I thought was fucking hilarious. But that's awful. Here they they have to give it back. If they don't if they don't cuff and stuff you, there's some weird law where they have to give you your marijuana back. Yeah. Oh no, they did. They they sent me to jail, but it was because I was intoxicated with alcohol. They just happened uh, to find the weed in my car when they searched it. So, but I was parked, like I wasn't driving. So. I was just I sleeping think, in my car. I, I had yeah. a buddy who um, he got picked up. You know, they got just pulled over. Granted, she was dumb. She literally had in the center console, just openly in the center console, a, a California big old brownie, right, with a big weed leaf on it. <laughs> and she got pulled over in Texas. And they saw that, and they just straight up cuffed her right there. And what was the fucked up part is, like, they, they take this brownie, and they put it on the scale. They weigh the brown and they're like, well, and they charge her for having, you know, three ounces of weed. I'm like, it's a three ounce brownie. It's a brownie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I can't yell because I'd be yelling right now. It's a brownie. <laughs> the concentration that makes me... of weed in this brownie. See, that's another reason why I, um, I'm not a fan of Texas. Now that butterfly on my, I love butterfly on my wall. But Texas scares me with their how much they hate weed. Yeah, or uh, I'm not sure if Nevada still is, but I know Nevada used to be notorious for that too, right? Like yeah. you didn't even have a joint. They legalized it. Oh, okay. And like it's weird because like you walk around the strip now, you go to um, Fremont Street. That's all you smell. Motherfuckers are walking down Fremont Street smoking jays, and the cops are are. Kind of like whatever about it because it's Vegas, you know. Yeah, Texas. yeah. I remember when we were in Reno, we were kids. We we went down to the uh, skate park and we rounded up some pot pretty fast. We just smoked it right there in the park. And it was like there were cops driving by, but we were like, "Fuck it, whatever." We, just, you know what I mean? Like well, they the didn't tourists. hassle us, but we were just kids, so I don't know if that made a difference. Helps the tourists. <laughs> no, this has been like. Almost twenty years, like twenty years ago now, man. Yeah, now I'm I'm an old man. Twenty years ago, <laughs> I see that all the time. When I was in Reno, like three weeks ago. I was watching this this young man who was in downtown Vegas, live streaming on his cell phone, smoking a blunt, walking past the cops. I was like, man, Vegas has <laughs> effing changed. <laughs> man, I, there's this uh, YouTuber that I used to watch way back in the day. And uh, his just thing was just smoking weed, just going out places and smoking weed. And uh, they uh, he he streamed himself like walking into this this one park and you know smoking up. And they they apparently at some point somebody realized that that was like a federal park that he walked into, and they straight up arrested him. They can like exhibit A, you walking into park. Exhibit B, you saying I am smoking weed at this park. Convicted. What? Wow. So if I go smoke a bowl at the, at the Sequoias, am I going to go to jail or what? You can. Wow. Yeah, because it's a federal law. Yep. Wow. Good to know. I do a lot of camping. So I uh, <laughs> I went into a federal park, and I have a bow and arrow. Um, and so when I got my bow, this was in 2016, I went down into a park, and uh, I was just practicing with my bow, you know, shooting at an oak tree. And this guy stopped me, and he goes, you know, if the Rangers catch you out here with that, they can bust you for poaching just for having the bow on federal land. I don't know if that's oh true, but God. that's what he told me. That scared the shit out of me. I was like, oh. <laughs> I, 
Wow. I, I'm going to look that up. I'm going to look that up because I have a compound bow. I take that thing everywhere with me. My, uh, my uncle be, you know, trying to be the, 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 you know, the humane person that he is. He had a raccoon problem on his property. So he, you know, rather than, you know, going out and poisoning him or killing it, he trapped him. And then he took that trap, you know, and then took it to the federal park, the, you know, the, the federal lands that was, you know, and then let it go. He got a federal site because that is apparently very illegal to do. <laughs> like, get, what? Like, bring random animals and take them to a federal park and let them go. So, yeah, like he had to go to federal court and like fight this charge and like got fined some ridiculous amount of money for letting a raccoon go. I should be taking notes. I do stuff like that, <laughs> especially with raccoons, because they harm everything around them. Little trash pandas. Oh, trash pandas are awful. We have possums. <laughs> possums have a purpose. They eat a lot. They're the reasons that we don't have Lyme disease. Possums are like, they eat ticks. They go off. We have cats around here. And the trash panda, trash pandas call that lunch, you know? So I'm not a fan. I am not a fan. Oh, man. I am almost at my full Batman. Like, I am Batman. It's because I freaking refuse to sit down. Michael Keaton's the best Batman. <laughs> I say that. I say that to all the time. That was just a great, the first two, the first movie was amazing. When he's in the, the Batman. Oh, 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 come on. It's just amazing. Amazing movie. <laughs> But do you think that we're biased so, because of? Do you think we're biased because of our age? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had to be there. You totally had to be there. Like I watched uh, uh, when I was a kid. I loved the first Jurassic Park. I watched that movie a billion times. <laughs> I was all but about I, uh, Jim Carrey as the Riddler. I thought that was the greatest fucking. He, that was he, your favorite? That Do you know what's really funny, uh, Chaos? I smoked to that movie. I'll put that yeah. movie on because that movie was on acid. And so, like, I'll put on, like, um, Led Zeppelin and put that on and sit there and smoke. Like, I, I, I have it on VHS because I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> Good God, man. I'm watching right now. I'm watching Godzilla 2000 with Matthew Broderick. Because oh, I, I saw yeah, I saw that one pop in my feed too. I was thinking about that. Yeah, I was like, uh, not, not the worst movie ever. I love this movie, <laughs> but again, I'm biased because I was coming of age at around that time. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm biased. You know, like a buddy of mine, we dropped acid and went and saw Fantasia 2000. <laughs> I think it's the greatest movie ever, but really it's because I took tabs and walked into a movie theater, you know, and I'm like, find out it wasn't even uh, Fantasia. <laughs> like walked into Blues Brothers. <laughs> well, and that was back when like the, cause it was 3d and, and like, I still laugh cause me and my friend, the whole movie were like, whoa, <laughs> but no one told us to shut up. So. Yeah, I'm sure the people, I'm sure the people behind yeah, you were you're so really out of it. <laughs> I remember watching uh, Fear and Loathing on fucking shrooms, man. That was that was off the hook. Oh, cool. yeah. it's a great movie. <laughs> that that would make me nervous because um, what's his face is so like rah, 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 in the movie. That movie is hardcore. <laughs> it's a great movie, though. I don't know if you see, I put job. over here in the private chat, um, one of them's actual law, hunting prohibited or whatever, but there's like some opinion shit. But, but basically, yeah, there is a federal law prohibiting hunting and the possession of weapons within any national park. That's good to know. So I won't bring a nine millimeter next time I go camping. Yeah, like what would it qualify as a hunting weapon? Like <laughs> you probably have your, your knife or something, you know, whatever's legal, but. What would, yeah, but what constitutes a legal knife in California? Yeah, with six inch blade, right? If it's fixed, you can't powers. defend yourself with that. I need a, I need a Bowie knife, you know. 
Yeah, they expect you to be an expert knife fighter. No. Well, I guess they're trying to minimize the incidence of knife fighting is what's going on there. So, so would, would this be considered illegal? This is my axe. I take this to work with me. I love this stupid thing. Would this be illegal in a national park? I don't think an axe would, no. Um, just anything that you would probably generally hunt with, like especially like if you kept it on a tool belt or something. You yeah. Know. I use it for a hammer, like you know, an axe is an actual real tool. Yeah, I, I bring a hatchet with me whenever I go ha- camping as well. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, totally. I remember there was a guy up in Reading, as a matter of fact, who um, they tried to bust him for carrying a saber. He had like a real, like, a, like I don't know what kind of, but it was a, it was like a full like eight, you know, like, yeah, I think it was like a seven foot sword or some shit. It was huge. Whoa. And it's fucking, but he carried it in a sheath on his hip and he wasn't, you know, like doing anything with it. He was just carrying it around with him. And uh, he ended up winning the case and getting it overturned. They said, well, he's got it in the sheath. He's carrying it properly. (laughs) Yeah. If you walked around here doing that, you're going to get nine sheriff's cars screaming at you, giving you (laughs) very explicit instructions. Back up, you idiot. Get on your knees. What are you doing? Why did you come here with a sword? What oh the my fuck? Yeah. Well, yeah, that was the way they dr- kind of did him, but he just cooperated, and he's like, all right. And he went into court, and the judge saw it his way. He's like, no, man, he'd, I wasn't doing anything. With it. I was just walking down the street with my sword, man. To make a statement, right? Like, who, why yeah. else would you walk around with a seven-foot sword? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, you know why? The only reason I say that is because um, if you draw attention to yourself, the cops are going to start asking you questions. But I live, I live in the city setting. You know, when I lived out in the middle of nowhere in Oregon, it wasn't rare to hear gunshots. I would, I'd be asleep, hear a gunshot, and go back to bed. When I lived in LA, if you hear a gunshot, I'm running towards the back of the house. <laughs> Man, I don't miss living in L.A. either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I try to avoid the uh, the urban lifestyle. I, I lived like, in the I hood. Like I lived in the hood, hood. Like, well, I, because I speak Spanish, I didn't know. And, like, I had an ex-girlfriend who lived on Hoover Street, which is one of the most gangster streets in L.A. And so she'd tell me, oh, just move over here. It's less gangster. I moved to MacArthur Park. <laughs> and the only reason I got away with it is because I fluently speak Spanish. You know? <laughs> but I saw some of the craziest stuff I ever saw in my life was living in that area. I literally saw people shooting at each other through sunroofs. And I remember thinking like, Damn, that shit only happens in the movie, bro. (laughs) Right? And I saw it, like, literally. um, I used to go to this Greasy Spoon Diner right there on, um, is that 3rd Street or Vermont? I can't, no, it was 3rd Street. Yeah, because I lived on 3rd and Loma in downtown LA. And I used to go to this Greasy Spoon. And I'm walking home with my food. I'm all excited. And these dudes were literally shooting at each other through a sunroof. And, you know. I'd been in L.A. for a while, but, like, you know, I'm from the Burbs, and I was like, it was, it was like a movie, you know? But they were aiming at each other, <laughs> so that no innocents got hurt, but it was real. Yeah, dude, L.A. is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in a very <laughs> just rural, well, relatively rural, you know, Grass Valley, you know, if you do know the area. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I know Grass Valley. Had many court dates there. I'm not talking about <laughs> I, yeah, I'm familiar the... with my previous employer of the uh, sheriff's department there. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. LA, LA. <laughs> uh, and the sad thing is, is that LA is more violent now than when I lived there 20 years ago. You know, so times change. It's 38 in Portland. Yikes. Is it here? And you guys, you guys are not that far from Portland. Let me tell you. <laughs> You're probably closer to Portland than you are yeah. to me. 
That's how big sure. California is. Apparently there's 38 here. Okay. Yeah, you guys are all the... Alexa, what's the temperature right now? Right now, it's 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, it's summer. It is I summer. got 40 degrees. And they say it's going to start raining. Oh. How can you not love the Matthew, Matthew Broderick Godzilla? How can you not love it? <laughs> no, I, I do love it. Some of it is just some of the dialogue is super cheesy because oh, of the era. It's the, and I haven't watched it in years. So that's why I was like, oh, yeah, I should go check that out. Again. <laughs> I bought that and coffee and cigarettes because I've never seen coffee and oh, cigarettes. Yeah. There, there's. A certain, oh yeah, that's one of the best movies ever. I, I've never seen it, and there's. Um, I've seen I'm clips because of YouTube, but there are certain movies where someone will ask me, like, "Hey, have you seen seen that movie?" And I'm like, "No, I'm sorry, my life was horrible in that particular year. <laughs> I didn't see any movies that came out that year. So every once in a while, there's one that slips through the radar, and I was at the Goodwill, and I saw it, and I was like. Holy cow, it's a movie I haven't seen. <laughs> you know, and for a buck, I'm not going to not buy it, you know. So tonight, I'm probably going to watch it. <laughs> I have an old school box TV next to my computer over here. CRT. <laughs> well, it's because I have a Sega and a Nintendo 64. Right. And the um, they, don't, they do not work. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> I'm addicted to Star Fox and the old school, you know, the from plasma up the, um, the gaming consoles don't work. They do. They, you know, or Mario looks like he's on acid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was just designed for that CRT like curve. <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of emulators and I ran out of cool games for the super Nintendo because there really just weren't that many. I uh, got addicted to an emulator that had like um, Gal Galica, Galactica, and 1942, where you're just a oh, bomber. Yeah. I was addicted to that, like just addicted to those stupid old arcade games. How how? Yeah, we had a bunch of those. The place I uh, I was working uh, last year. I just yeah, get yes. It's, it's, it's funny, like with like the games, like the Nintendo and Super Nintendo and all the, all the games from my childhood. I remember like, man, it taking me weeks and months to actually, you know, beat these games. And now I play and like I literally beat like Mario in a half an hour. I'm like, God, what the hell? That I totally agree with you. Um, I, when I was a kid, Sonic 2, like I waited for Sonic 2 to come out. Like, I remember waiting and going to the store and buying it. Um, I hadn't played it in a long time. Isaiah and I were sitting here having this in-depth conversation. And he looks at me like a half hour into it. He's like, he's like, Pops, you almost beat the game. <laughs> and I told him, like, like, and I told him the truth. I told him, like, I have played this game hundreds and hundreds. And it's like muscle memory. When I was a kid, I know this is a shocker. I got mono and I got the kissing kissing. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should have learned that lesson. You know, it's funny. I, I, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. I should have learned the lesson back then, but <laughs> freaking, um, I got mono. I was quarantined because my glands, I, I was the reverse hunchback. My glands were so swollen that I had looked like I had a butt on, on the front of my face. And so, oh, it was awful. I was quarantined for four months. Good God. And, oh, I read every book I got my hands on. And I watched every VHS. But um, I played my Sega. And my dad, having sympathy on me, bought me a PlayStation years before they were popular. So I had, like, Resident Evil 1. Like, I had, like, all the old school games. But... I sat there for four months playing video games, you know, like, and I, and I was quarantined. So I had no schedule. I became a vampire. I was a kid, you know, I'm all of a sudden I'm watching, uh, who was it? 
I was oh, I was obsessed with David Letterman. You know, <laughs> kid obsessed with David Letterman. No, I was a kid. It's because Jay Leno was so LA. Like I got LA. Like David Letterman was foreign to me because I'm not a New Yorker. You know, I I like watching other styles. You know. I'm not a hater. <laughs> I, I'm i curious. I want to know how other people live. I want to know what people are doing. Like, that's why I think it's cool that we can talk to people in the UK, Australia. Like, you know, you see how much we live, how much we are alike, and also how different we are. That's the cool thing about the internet. Everything else is just people stalking each other. <laughs> For real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you can really like have have in depth conversations with almost any type of person, like if you're you know, honest about it, like Yeah. I'm into culture. Even when I was a kid, like when I would watch rap videos, I would be like, Okay, that's what's going on in Georgia. That's what they're doing in Milwaukee. That's what they're you know, like I never looked at it like, oh, they're different. Like I wanted to see how they lived, you know, what they were doing. I've always been curious. I've always been like that, you know. Absolutely. Like, I think it's like that, like a Henry Rollins view of the world. Like, you know, just going out there, yeah, like, like you're talking about. But now you can you can do it on the internet. You don't have to get on an airplane every time. But I mean, that would be a cool experience too. To, you know, get some money together, be able to, you know, go and you know eat some Indian food in India. You know, oh, like, that would be awesome. I'd need an EpiPen. <laughs> I the second <laughs> the second you said Henry Rollins, um, I have an ex girlfriend who we troll each other all the time, and like every once in a while we, we remind each other why we we were we why we were never meant to be together, but like just to make her angry, I always send her the Rollins "I'm a Liar" song. I <laughs> love that because I'm a liar. Yeah. I love the Henry Rollins band. I remember hearing that on like MTV2 when I was younger, like way before I ever heard of Black Flag, too. Like, I was like, what is it? It's just like. <laughs> Black Flag was sick. Um, Rollins, like, but see, that's the thing. Because he had a name, they'd play all his videos. Yeah. On MTV. Like, they'd play anything he put out, they would play. That and um, Smashing Pumpkins was on every morning before I got to went to school. Right. Fucking or uh, Nirvana, you know, especially after Kurt's death. You know, they oh, still gosh. play Nirvana ad nauseum. Like, okay. <laughs> that it was like, like um, I was more like into Soundgarden, um, Alice in Chains. My cousin was really into, into Nirvana. So Nirvana reminds me of like, like emo before it was emo. <laughs> like all of a sudden, my cousin started dressing like Kurt Cobain. He'd wear like long sleeve striped flannels, wear, wear his dad's pants with an old dirty flannel, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard about them when I was a, a kid. I was a, still in grade school and a friend's, my friend's older brother turned us on to him. And he was, you know, dressing in the flannel and all of that. And, <laughs> and we were like, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, you know he, he said something. You know, we put on the best. They put on the best live shows, and I was like, "So when? You know, when are they coming to? You know, play? You know, when can you go and see him or whatever, something like that?" He's like, "No, the guy's fucking dead. He blew his head <laughs> off, man." <laughs> oh, you yeah. know what? Like, I was butt hurt when I found out that Jim Morrison was dead. Like, <laughs> oh man, that whole era was different because. I'm obsessed with Faith No More, okay? There was a certain style of rock that was popular. Grunge, literally within six months, killed rock and roll. They didn't show it on TV anymore. All of a sudden, Wet Toad Sprocket got popular because they were grungy, but they were kind of pop. Like, they got rid of all the hair bands. Like, it was overnight. It was overnight. I guess because I was of age in the 80s, like, I still remember hair bands, like, my brother dressing like Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> oh, my God. 
I still make fun of him for that with the hair and everything. <laughs> you know. Did I ever tell you uh, what happened uh, at the last um, the last catch? It was the last concert I was at um, the Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah, well uh, the I only made it halfway through the concert because some <laughs> dude uh, behind me uh, decided to just kind of hit me in the upside the head with a chair. And yeah, you know, they had to haul my ass out in, a, in an ambulance. But uh, yeah, like oh, it, it's funny, yeah, about how people like they, they think they'll have a, like anonymity w- within the crowd, but every motherfucker around like pointed to the dude, and, you <laughs> Fuck know, and yeah, they, and they got you know arrested him for assault with a deadly weapon, and you know he convicted him, and but yeah, I I was upset, you know, because not only did you know I miss the you know half the concert and you know I had to go to the emergency room. But like I had, I had my girlfriend and my brother with me at the time. My girlfriend being, you know, significantly smaller than me, and my brother having, you know, spinal issues. But would have hit one of them, it could have killed them. You know, that's they, he, this dude so he this just picked chair. you randomly out of the crowd. You, you didn't. Him. Like, his wow. excuse was he was so drunk he didn't remember. Oh God, I hate people. I just can't stand. I, I, I don't like excuses. Excuses make me angry. Like you did it. You did it. Get over like you no. I I hate excuses. You know what's really funny? Because of my son's autism, um, because of what I've seen at um uh, more baseball and football games, we don't go to sporting events unless we're like um 16 deep. Last time <laughs> I took my son, last time I took my son to a baseball game, I came literally with uh, myself, Isaiah, and 16 other people. Jesus. You know, oh, deep. Oh, and we had to because it's no joke, and it's sad because, like, when I was a kid, my, my dad would take us to Raider games, and he'd always tell us we're sitting up here because we're non-combatants. My mom would take us to Ram games, and we could sit in the front row. <laughs> you know, like we in peace. You know, <laughs> Laker games. Whenever the Lakers were in the playoffs, it was known if there's a championship. Don't be downtown. Don't. Because if the Lakers win. Stay off the streets. Oh, they're going to burn. Like, they're literally, um, the last time the Lakers won, this was a while ago, but they had the helicopter. You could see people walking from East L.A. just looting and rioting. Like the L.A. riots all over. <laughs> literally. And you're like, you're like, oh, my gosh. They're walking. You see them walk across the bridge straight to the stadium and just they were pushing over cars. Some poor guy. Who are they playing? Some idiot was flying a flag of the other team. He got his car flipped with him in it. Dude, it's a fucking sports ball game. Come on. (laughs) But it's sad because um, Isaiah, like we used to go to hockey games. He'd have earmuffs and everything, but like it just got too dangerous. And people don't mess with me. Like, I'll put my vest on. People leave me alone. But I'm not going to stand by by some guy gets beat up for just because he has a New York Rangers jersey on. Like, get over yourself, bro. For I don't know. I just, I don't like bullies. You know? It's because I was raised around people with special needs my whole life. And having a special needs child, like, I'll fight you. I'll fight you. <laughs> There's something about that, like that whole, like, you know, rugged, you know, s- sports, like, you know, you're NASCAR fans, just beer and testosterone. Like they just, you know, you just get like crowd, hist- you know, like mass hysteria at those events sometimes. Like, I'll tell you, crazy. I've, I've been to massive NASCAR events in California. They're not screaming the N word. It's respectful. It's people of all colors, at least in Southern California. I've been to Fontana. I've been to the Long Beach Grand P Grand Grand P Grand Prix. Um, I went to NASCAR in Arizona. Man, it's a different world, different freaking universe, you know. So I think it's environmental. Yeah, I was gonna say you go down to the south. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. You no, know, you know what? Like some, like some parts of the south. The South is really strange because people are racist, but they're nice as hell to your face. And they make some bomb ass cornbread. They make some bomb ass cornbread. They, the food in the South, like you'll go to you'll go to some random store and you're like, this is the best 
food I've ever had in my life. And some guy in the kitchen is literally watching Ohio State game on TV, you know? <laughs> like, the South yeah. is no joke. But, like, I went to – and this was in Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania is not considered the South, but it's racist. I walked into a diner, and they had David Duke's KKK suit behind glass. What the fuck? <laughs> the fuck? That's America, bro. So you tell me that. And, like – an ex girlfriend of mine, we traveled from from Santa Monica to Georgia all the way up to Maine. And so once a year we say, Hey, yeah, what's up? She always brings that up, like how scary Pennsylvania was. Cause we went through the South and a lot of people made comments about interracial couples. And we're like, What century are we in? You know? A lot but I've been people. to houses in Northern California where you walk in the front door, everything looks normal, and then you go into the back room, and you know there's friggin' Nazi flags all over yep. the place, and Confederate oh, yeah. flags. Like what the? For real. It, I mean, we we got them. They're just more covert. Totally, totally. Like you couldn't here where I live, you have to. Um, you couldn't. I always say, don't wear anything you're not willing to defend yourself over, you know, <laughs> and you just, you couldn't get away with that here, but I can see how in NorCal, because there's more numbers up there. Excuse What's me, funny, didn't, didn't they do that? Uh, the, uh, the American Nazi party, didn't they do that, uh, that demonstration in LA or whatever they did their little parade and they had yeah. to have the LAPD come out to defend them from the people who were just out there throwing shit at them. And, fucking, so, like, and the, the, right the Trumpers, though. the Trumpers ran into this too, because there was like 500 Trumpers who showed up. Okay. Like 6,000 people showed up to tell them to piss off. <laughs> the cops nice. literally told the Trumpers like, whatever you're going to do, do it now. Cause we can't protect you. This was in the middle of 22. Oh, it was, there was, um, it was so bad. You'd see a MAGA guy running and there were waves of people chasing him. (laughs) They picked the, like, you can't do that in LA. Like we have numbers here, bro. Sorry. Like, like we outnumber you here. Sorry. Like LA is a different universe and people don't realize that. Like a lot of people move here and they don't realize that like, um, White people are a minority in Southern California. And they're shocked by that. Like, um, I have quite a few friends that are actually from Korea. I know um, quite a few people that are from Afghanistan, Pakistan, um, India. I have quite a few friends that are from India. You know, L.A. is a very diverse place, you know. And as somebody who's half I was in Sacramento, you're... Oh, go ahead. Bro. You guys remember during uh, Black Lives Matter, I was in Sacramento and they shut down the the freeways. They shut down all the freeways uh, with protesters, like walk out onto the freeway. Uh, but it was like a bunch of young people and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, that was and that was crazy. And we got a lot of like like younger people who are uh, politically uh, active I- again. Same here. I might have been actually there during that. I was talking about it during that uh, marching with the uh, BLM. <laughs> I'm going to go to the head really? real quick. Yeah. Nice. We you, you working yeah, the yeah. event? Yeah, I was, I was otherwise engaged at the time, but I remember, like, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was it was. It, it was a good uh, good turnout. There was a lot of good, you know, good protests that I was uh, able to participate because I was in Sacramento. And yeah. it's yeah, it's it's good stuff. It's, it's it's a decent community and it's 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 not as uh, you know diverse as, you know, say, you know, Los Angeles and Southern California, but it's a pretty diverse uh, group of people and especially with the university there. You know, it, it uh, it's a really good melting pot. Yeah, I was um I I lived there for what, well off and on ten years and uh ten, twelve, something like that. Quite a while. And uh and I was involved in the music scene. One of the things that I found really interesting, I think they still do this, a lot of the uh the crowd that I hung out with, which is generally the you know, like you know, 
most of the people I hang out with are, are a few years older than me, I should say, you know, but, um, but there's kind of like the eighties, early nineties, uh, rock and grunge crowd. Um, but in the off time, like if you go out to the bars in SAC, they'll play like weird, like mixes of rap and country music. And you're like, okay, they're listening like, yeah, straight up, straight up hip hop and then a country song and then back to the hip hop, you know, and he's like, what the hell? What universe did I just walk into? And all these guys right. are in like local heavy metal bands and stuff. <laughs> That's great. I had to yeah. go borrow. I had to go borrow this from the mannequin because it's getting cold out here. <laughs> so we switch. We switch hats. I gave the mannequin a sombrero and I put my king's beanie on. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I can feel the temperature drop in here. What were, what were you just talking about, though, Chaos? Oh, I was uh, I was talking about the music scene in Sacramento. At least last time I was up there, and uh, some of the like how there's it's it it is very conservative in a lot of ways. It's not as diverse as like say L.A. or or San Fran or whatever, but. Um, but the people who are up there, they're like, there's a really interesting bunch. Cause like, um, I know like a few people who are in like the heavy metal scene, but in their off time, they do like karaoke nights and stuff and you'll hear, or, or they'll DJ and it'll be like rap and country mixed together. Like not that like actual rap country mix, but like, you know, they'll play like oh, a yeah. hip hop song and then they'll play a country song and then they'll, <laughs> that's, like, that's their mix all night. And you're just like, who are these people? Oh, you gotta pay the bills, man. You gotta pay the bills. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and when I saw um I saw Iron Maiden, Motorhead, and Dio, and it was mainly oh. Hispanic people in the crowd. This was at the Long Beach Arena in two thousand and two or three. But um it was mainly Hispanic people there in LA. Whenever you go to a metal show, it's mainly um, Hispanic people. And because I'm half Mexican, it's mainly Mexican people. <laughs> Man, it's I wish crazy. I gotten to see Dio. Oh, Dio. You know, yeah, like was, uh, that's like uh, Machine Head. You know, you know mm -hmm. Machine Head, they're from Oakland. And a, a big part of their following is, is Hispanic people, too. So they got to actually have a local following there. I saw black. I saw um, black label. I was mainly Hispanic people, but again in LA, like um, you'd be surprised who's a metalhead. And when I went, I've I've seen Slayer. I counted nineteen times, and um, freaking, um, I would just basically see him every summer from the time I was twelve, you know, or I'd see him twice, you know, twice one year, but. There was a lot of African American people at Slayer shows, especially in uh, like. Have you ever heard of the pits of hell? Their pits look like the pits of hell. Like you'll get four pits going at once, and then they they'll start playing their da na 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 da na na. You know, like it's unreal. Then the lights, then the smoke's coming out, like. It's hardcore. And, but, you know, I'll say for all the Slayer shows I went to, um, I'm mad enough to admit I only went in like four or five pits. And I would go in the end, get punched in my head, and then come crawling out the side because <laughs> they're intense. Like, I've been to shows where people have been kicked out just for um, because they're slam dancing and they're hurting people, you know? Oh, wow. You know, because, uh, you know, slam, there's a difference between slam dancing and just running and swinging you know just just assault <laughs> no because yeah what you said really um messed with me because i've been hit in the head with the chair and i will have that scar for the rest of my life you know and i that's the most cowardice thing you can do is hit someone when they're when their back's turned like, and I knew nothing of this guy. I'd never talked to him. Like, I didn't think I did anything to offend him, you know. And he was, he was like two or three rows behind me. So, I, I 
he said it was random, but also he said he was too drunk to remember. So he doesn't. There's there's actual pit etiquette. Like there's real etiquette when you're in a pit and you don't hit people with chairs. For real, <laughs> definitely not that. I did have uh, one of the worst instances I had from the pit, and I wasn't in but the this- pit. I was, I was like. I was just outside of the pit and the guy in front of me was just this big ass bald guy, like six foot six or something, just humongous. And, um, it was an agnostic front show, uh, while agnostic front was playing. And it was a pretty small venue, uh, in Sacramento. I don't think they do shows anymore. Distillery, uh, downtown. Uh, but at the time they were doing a lot. And, um, and so, yeah, I saw agnostic front with hoods there. And during agnostic front set, this guy, in front of me. So I'm like two people behind him, but he's, you know, standing, you know, like there's, there's this dude over here and the pit shifts and the guy in front of me like jumps this way. And this bald guy just comes crashing down in front of me and the back of his head met my face. And so I got this gnarly scar under my, uh, under my eye from that, oh, that's awesome. just busted me wide open. And I just ran into the bathroom and he was cleaning the blood off the back of his head. He was like, cause I just stayed there for a minute. Like, I don't know what the fuck just happened. And he ran into the bathroom. Like, cause he had hit his head on the ground and shit. And, uh, and, uh, and, and all of a sudden I just start dumping blood on the floor and I go oh, yeah. in there. And I just, I just watered up with paper towels and he started cleaning the blood off the back of his head. He's like, fuck, I'm sorry, dude. Are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'll be fine. I was, I was pretty drunk. You know? <laughs> I was like, fuck, I already really, been in the pit. I was adrenalized. And, he, uh, he almost I, killed you. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> oh, you could have taken my eye out almost. It was just you know, <clears throat> that far away. Busted my orbital know, or something. You know what's really funny? Um, both of you guys would know what a togos is, right? You know about togos. Absolutely. I worked I had togos at, just the other day. I missed togos. I worked at quite a few togos when I was in my 20s. And long story short, I worked in North Hollywood. And this young man was harassing this woman. And I walked around the counter and I was like, hey, bro, you need to leave her alone. And she ran off because he was like grabbing her arm and he was being an idiot. Being like 20 years old. I realized um, I did I did a rookie mistake because he was like, all right. He, he turned around like he was walking away. I turned my back to him. Oh, no. And I walk away. Next thing I know, I'm literally standing at the counter. And I and, and this is how I know uh, the whole Tweety Bird thing is real. I got hit in the head with a chair and I saw a, a light, like a halo of light. Because he hit me so hard, he made he hit me like Tweety Bird, you know, like Sylvester. I saw, I literally saw a halo of light, like so. That's real. <laughs> but he he hit me in the head with a chair for defending some young woman who just didn't want to be harassed, you know. Gosh, I was such a, I was such a hero as a kid. <laughs> when you when you were no, immortal. But- no, but I chased him and um, a good friend of mine, he tackled me because we worked together and he was like, I was like, what are you doing? Why are you tackling me? I'm going to get that guy. And he's like, bro, your head is bashed open and you are gashing blood. And he literally ripped my shirt art open and gave me like a headband. And he was like, bro, like you need to come back right now. And we're going to the hospital. You know, I didn't realize how bad- to my shirt. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad it was, you know, because it like like chaos was saying, adrenaline is a mother chunker. Adrenaline, like you could do anything on adrenaline, you know, for real, because you don't realize how hurt you are. <laughs> yeah, it was like the next morning. I woke up and I still just had like a wad of paper towels and some duct tape, and I showed it to my stepmom, and she was like, "Dude, you needed to go get fucking stitches." I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And I just taped it shut. <laughs> I was like, fuck it, clean it out and tape it shut. <laughs> you know what? I gashed, I gashed my face open at work, and a woman saved my face with invisible stitches. I gashed my face open. And she's like, she's like, you're so lucky. I was a field medic in the army. And she looked me in the eyes and she was like, don't cry. And she grabbed my face and Put, she had invisible stitches. 
She saved my face. You learn you learn things about people when you hurt yourself on the job site. <laughs> oh man. Funny, um, just this morning. Yeah, I'm sleeping. Time I was and... like of the mindset that I was like, oh no, a scar on my face, that'd look kind of cool. I'll keep it, you know. <laughs> and now I'm like, yeah, that thing fucking sucks. <laughs> What were you gonna say, Skids? Oh, sorry. Um, I was on just this morning, and I was you know, I was sleeping, and uh, I could hear my roommate, you know, waking up and getting ready for work, and I hear a thud, and him just like you know, an audible groan. So I go out and check on him. Apparently, he just like didn't turn on the lights or something, and just ran right into a corner of a beam, right into his eye. Split it open, blood oh everywhere. Like, I'm like, good God, man. He's like, not, you know, it's like not the greatest way to wake up in the morning. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> With some butterfly stitches, we you know, got it, you know, <laughs> control them. Oh my gosh. I, um, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I know it's shocking, but I'm, I'm accident prone. <laughs> so I have quite a few scars. I am like, um, I don't like Tim Allen in real life. The <laughs> real life, Tim Allen is a snitch. He literally got out of prison for snitching on somebody. And now he's a hardcore Trumper. Yeah. But at my job, they call me tool time because I think I can oh, no. fix anything. They, I think I can fix anything and I end up starting a fire. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was shocked when I got my foreman certification. They were like, you passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tool time is a real life foreman. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm the son of an electrical engineer. My dad could do anything. So I think I can do that. And I always end up um, at the hospital. <laughs> These things happen. Yeah. <laughs> My middle name is I can fix that. I know a guy like that who is actually an electrician, um, but it, he's unlicensed. I guess I shouldn't say give too much information about it. But the guy, like, you know, he's got some problems. I'll just say he's got some problems, but he can actually like rig up his, you know, his freaking phone to like, you know, get power out of like a nine volt battery through your freaking fuse box or something in your car, or, like just like with a couple of copper wires. Like you just see him do some crazy shit, but it works. Like it works. Like, oh my gosh. I'm MacGyver. I'm MacGyver all kinds of stuff. I'm not above. I'm not above trying to fix something at all. <laughs> That's literally what I do at my YouTube channel is like right. just fixing broken stuff. <laughs> it's become such a lost art, really. Like everything nowadays is, you know, well, well, mostly literally designed just to like, oh, you can't fix this. So you you got to chuck it. I have a, a real question for you. Can you fix your car right now? Depending on what's wrong with it, but most likely no. <laughs> like um, my truck. Especially since it's electro, uh, it's an <laughs> electric car. Yeah. My, my truck. I literally, I hear something wrong with it. I'm like, okay, I know what's wrong with it. Okay, it's this, this, and this. I have a Ford Flex. I don't even know how to change the oil. Honestly, I don't, I, I take it in because I don't know how to change the oil. I wouldn't even, I, I open the hood and it's nothing but computers. Nothing but computers, you know? You Chaos, can you, can you, inside those things? <laughs> Are you mechanically inclined, Chaos? Um, there's some things I can do for myself. I mean, I could definitely change my oil or even yeah. like, you know, my brake pads or something like that uh, if I had the tools. Now, that's <laughs> my, been my problem. Like, it took me a long time to get my collection of tools. So when I lost them, I was kind of like pretty devastating. I know people, there's some people that just like come, you know, they come up on tools. You'd be like, look, I got this, you know, $2,500 set of, you know, and it's like, I've got, you know, like a, some screwdrivers and some socket wrenches, you know, like, the, but 
some basic stuff, but nothing heavy, you know. So it's like it makes it pretty difficult to do a lot of the the, the bigger jobs. That is one thing. Um, I've accumulated quite a few tools over the years. And that helps. That really helps. Especially like with my truck. I have a wench. I have all kinds of stuff. Because um, at my job, I do all kinds of odd jobs. And in the canyon, I'm the rattlesnake guy. I get paid money to remove rattlesnakes. Interesting. Because the, the average person is scared of them. But what I'm not telling you is I have Kevlar leg leg guards and a, a seven foot stick, <laughs> a seven foot grabber. You know, it's literally what the dog catchers have, but it's modified okay. to catch to catch snakes. You know? Yeah, even a good like a two prong stick is if you have a snake stick and you know what you're doing. I mean, you could pretty well outsmart them. I mean, you obviously know that. So hold on one second. Yeah, we see a lot of rattlers out here, and I, I had one I almost stepped on it because I wasn't damn paying attention, you know, and uh, it was a big one. It was probably about four-foot rattlesnake, uh, but it was just sleeping in the shade, like right in the middle of the trail, and I just went, oh, like two steps back and went around and continued about, and it, it didn't move a muscle on me. Never. Just so I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> but, you know, I was, you know, all... I wasn't carrying a stick, and that's a good rule. Always, if you're in the hills, you know you have rattlesnakes. You know, have some kind of stick, usually like something with two prongs, and so you can uh, pin its head down if it does try to attack you. Yeah. Five bucks. Five bucks says he walks in and does this. Oh. Wait, wait, who's back? <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're just we're fortunate here, you know, in, you know, California, where it's not necessarily everything you know out there, you know, goes and try to kill us. You know, we we don't have too many to poisonous snakes or yeah, poison. In like venom, even around venom. here, oh sorry, we are lucky that way. And most rattlers mind their own business. They don't want anything to do with you. To tell you the honest truth, they're rattling to warn you, like, hey, dude, I could kill you, so back off, you know. And I, I'm a catch and release. I do not kill snakes. Well, unless, yeah. unless unless they're like, one time I had to, but it's because it was near a nonverbal human being and it was about to strike them. I gotcha. And that was the only right. time I've ever had to, to off a snake. Because I put them in, I'll put them in, a, in a, a rubber trash can and just take them on the other side of the canyon. <laughs> not not to a federal park. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when you guys said that, I'm like, am I on federal land? Like the whole time I'm like I'm like, fuck, I've done that so much, it's not even fucking like I've I've taught my son to catch and release. I don't want him to go to jail in the future thinking that it's the 1920s we can do whatever we want, you know. <laughs> Do you ever get called out for like non rattlers or somebody thinks it's a rattlesnake and calls you and you're like, that's not a rattlesnake, but all the time anyway, okay. all the time. It's because we have gopher snakes and gopher snakes. Thank me. They're like, thank you. for <laughs> Thank you for getting me away from this screaming psycho. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to chill here and eat some bugs. One of the things that they would call us for when we were doing pest control and, um, uh, when I was doing pest control, and I guess a lot of these uh, places do, like they'll call you for lizards and like little snakes, like the like garter snakes and stuff in the backyard, and they'll put out these sticky traps. And it's just the cruelest thing, though, because they'll stick these freaking yep. reptiles, these sticky traps, and then let them bake in the sun or whatever. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know, people also, um, I tell people don't buy sticky traps. Because someone like me is going to get paid to walk in your house, charge you 200 bucks to grab some screaming rat so I can drown it in front of you and traumatize you so that you will never buy a sticky trap again. Because you can't do anything for them. You can't release them. You know, it's awful. Sticky traps are the worst. No, I had a rat that was trapped in an attic in one of the snap traps, but it caught its hindquarter. So yeah, he was oh, just up oh. there dragging the thing around for like 
almost two days, and then I had to go up there and off him with a hammer. Yes, man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I am not a fan. I, you know, I love nature, yeah. but I love nature. I am not a fan of, of rats. My When I first met my ex-wife, I, I never make crazy demands of any human being. But I walked in her house, and I said, look, we are really cool, but I cannot live in the same house as a rat. <laughs> She had this giant rat. She would let his balls just drag all around. He would. He, I'm. I'm sorry. I was raised in a freaking clean room. Animals lived outside. I had. A, I had two dogs, and um, like um, Max lived his whole life on the dog run, and and like at the ranch, and Cleopas exactly the same. But I let him live in the house because I'm a sucker. But like, <laughs> I don't know. I. My ex-wife always had exotic pets. I thought it was the strangest thing. She um, she had lizards. Her house smelled like lizard pee. It smelled... I'm sorry. Maybe I'm judgmental. Maybe I'm bougie. But, like, can you own an exotic lizard that made your house smell like lizard pee? <laughs> no. Then a guy wouldn't own an exotic lizard, period. I'm more of a cat or dog kind of guy. No, I know a woman who has a bunch of birds in the back of her house, like dozens of birds. And she's got like a parrot, but it's parakeets and like basic birds. Like there's all different kinds, but that room just smells so foul to me. Like you're going to keep all those birds in there. Like, I would go oh, mentally geez. insane with the noise. The yeah, that's what gets me. Yeah. I hate the, just walking out. Every house that's ever had a bird, it's that rain. Like you just randomly hear the bird, you're like, "What? The, what was that? What the hell was that?" You know? Yeah, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. I, I, um, I when I was um, 19, I dated a, a young lady who was the same age, and she owned two ferrets, and it traumatized me because at the time, I don't know if they're still legal in California, but they're they're legal in Arizona. So in Arizona, you can own a ferret. Ferrets smell just as bad as you think they do. Ferrets smell like a dead ferret. They smell no. bad. <laughs> you can see I'm not a marmot fan at all. <laughs> I I had this one girlfriend for a while, and she she was a she was a big animal lover, and she had all kinds of animals, you know. Uh, you know, rats, you know, cats, dogs, you know, gerbils, guinea pigs, oh, the, the, the gamut, right? But, like, every time I'd go over there, I'd instantly start getting some wicked allergies. So, like, half the time, like, I, as soon as I'd get there, I'd have to take some Benadryl. And then I'd oh, yeah. <laughs> So, like, half the time over there, I'm just sleeping. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it was just awful. Like, it was... Just the combo. Like, I've had allergies from animals before, but, like, this was, like, a death combo. Like, it was, it was the worst I've ever had. Am I, am I being judgmental for saying that, like, I'm not the exotic pet type? Like, that's just not me. Like, I could not do it. <clears throat> Mike, Mike Tyson told a very famous story about how um, someone asked him, they were like, hey, do you own an exotic pets? He said, nah, man, nah. He said, look, don't ever own anything that can eat you. He owned a <laughs> real-life Black Panther, and he told a story about how the Black Panther tried to drag him in the cage, and if he wasn't Mike Tyson, that panther would have killed him. He said, if that was any other, any other human... Um, that panther would have killed him, but Mike Tyson was just, you know, giving the panther the one two, and and he had his ear. Oh yeah, the panther um, had his jaws locked on him and everything, and he still has a scar. Yeah, so I live by that rule. Like I will never own anything that can drag me in a corner. <laughs> Ever. <a> good rule. <laughs> hey, uh, I got the I got the low battery, so I'm gonna I'm gonna head off, but I'll I'll listen in on you. But it's good chatting with you guys. You as well. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Talk to you later. Good, Good seeing you. Good seeing you. But yeah, like, that's one thing. You look like dog versus cat. Like, you, you, you take on, like, if you get attacked by a 25-pound dog, you have a fair chance of winning that fight. Yep. Yep. 
Well, you get attacked by a 25 pound cat. Oh, no. At, at my job, we have uh, real life cougars and mountain lions. And after, after the 07 buckwheat fire, I'm weed whacking because we, we did nothing but land clearing after that because everything was dead. And I see my dad run up with a 22 and I'm like, man, what did I do? I didn't, ex I don't extort money. I didn't do anything. And he's like, get down. There was a, a, a cougar stalking me. Oh shit. I was weed whacking with chainsaw headphones on with my iPod earphones inside. You can hear shit. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Except for my music, you know? And it was following me. And my dad was up on the hill watching it. And he's like, it, it was literally legitimately following me back and forth, you know? I did, you know, and, um, Chaos. I own every crummy charger from like the 7-Eleven ones to the 99 cent store ones to Apple. They all don't work. None of them work. <laughs> Not one. But yeah, in Cali, we, we have, um, we have real life cougars and that that's not just somebody's mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. We have cougars here and there's been quite a few times, but honestly they leave us alone unless they're injured. And when they're injured, they go after people. It's the weirdest thing. Maybe they know that we're going to take them out. I don't know. I don't know. Didn't they just recently um, euthanize like a, um, like a famous mountain lion that was from Southern California? Yeah. Yeah. I saw, th I saw that news story too, man. It was depressing. But like um, what happens is, is that like the funny thing is they won't eat your cat. But they'll eat your dog, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the strangest thing. They're just, I, you know, what's so sad. I feel sorry for the cat because Southern California has it's like cancer. It's spreading out to the mountains. Like, Cal, like we build so many homes here that no one can afford. I don't get it. So we're encroaching on their land. You know what I'm saying? It's not the other way around because there's already. Tens of millions. Well, Alexa, how many people live in LA County? According to the 2020 U.S. Census, the population of Los Angeles County is 10 million people, which is a 2.6 percent <sighs> increase over the 2010 U.S. Census. I gotta pee again. I'll be right back. It's it's the pot teas catching up. But yeah, there's <laughs> a million people here. Oh. But yeah, yeah, it is it is a true fact that as he says, but California's got some pretty big cats roaming around. You know, as I you know grew up, one of the things that uh, you know we would see when we'd walk around uh, in the snow time, you know, because it was a pretty wooded area, you know, we'd see you know obviously like deer tracks and everything like that, but then you'd see uh, mountain lion tracks stalking the said deer, and then you hopefully they didn't stalk you. But yeah, good stuff. I really want one of his uh his um flags. Go somewhere over there. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, do you know, I forget how sense. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just, uh, I was just telling uh, whatever audience it might be. It's like how much I like your uh, Klingon flags are. <laughs> I, those were awesome when I made them. I, um, uh, you know, I was going to make the original red, red ones, but they look like Nazi flags. <laughs> they look a little too Nazi. <laughs> Then I looked at the color and I was like, oh, that color scheme is bad. So I reversed it from red to black. Good call. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is literally the house of sewing. Like this, this is my personalized Klingon flag. You know, I like it. That's why I, I that's why I always say here in the house of sewing. <laughs> because like um, it. Uh, and you know what? Um, I know why the original Klingon flag looks like that. Because, yeah. you know, even in um, Undiscovered Country, um, 
Captain Kirk tells um, what's his name, like when he's giving his speech, he's like, oh, Hitler, Earth. See, I told you. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not a, a Nazi fan, you know, so I completely <laughs> changed the colors. Good call. And I'm, I'm of the mindset of like, like you can't give, like we cannot give the Proud Boys yellow and black. No, that is for the Wu-Tang is for the children. That is Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang is yellow and black. Like when I saw the Proud Boys, I was like, ooh, you are not stealing Wu-Tang's colors. No. <laughs> I forbid it. I will go to war. <laughs> we again, we don't get that around here because they'd get beat up. They'd find they'd find the, the brown boys. <laughs> they you know it's it's a different universe. I I've seen proud boys up north. Up oh, with yeah. my own two eyes, wearing the t-shirts and everything, you know. And in Oregon, um, in Eugene, I saw a dude who was my who was my color wearing um one of those offensive six million isn't enough t-shirts and like literally trying to fight people and and the people i was with we were like we were standing there we were like we're so confused <laughs> oh. he looked like me he looked like me too and my friends were like go get your cousin <laughs> like this yeah like yeah. craziness and knows no races like <laughs> look at look at the, kanye you know like true the founder of the proud boys um was a light-skinned african-american guy was you it? know i didn't know that yeah it was a total total oh yeah <laughs> had the red fox thing going on you know <laughs> <laughs> kanye west um i'm so tired of kanye like you know, before I used to like when I would see him on Twitter, I'm like, I, I can deal with crazy. Now I'm like, oh, not today. Not today, Kanye. <laughs> too crazy. Too crazy. <laughs> I I feel like um there's a difference between I've had bad days, I've had bad years, you know, but Kanye is off his meds. Like, um, it's not okay to stand and like we we all pointed and laughed at him, but he's still going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like uh... I, I won't. I will. I will never judge. You know, typically, I will never judge. You know, somebody on on a single action. You know, on on their worst day. You know, because we've all had terrible days. We've all done stupid things. But that has its limits when you are standing there saying that you love Hitler. <laughs> nah, no, nah, I'm judging you now. Like, do you see, like, my reaction was instantly laughing because, like, I feel like we um, did a disservice to this younger generation because when I got online, again, I got online in my late 30s and my 40s. So a couple years ago, I got online and I'm like, people are Holocaust deniers. I got mad when people were downvoting the MC Hammer video. I'm like, bro, if you don't like it, don't watch it. You don't like Hammer? Why are you downvote? Hammer had like like two hundred thousand downvotes, and I'm like, this anyone who downvoted this was not from the '90s. Those damn kids, you know. <laughs> I just we, you know, I I um, I'm just sick of it all. And the other day, I saw this thing about the Pride Boys, and I was like, no, you cannot have black. That man, I'm gonna get a T-shirt press. That's the one piece of equipment I don't have. And I'm I'm gonna that's me my first t-shirt is so black and yellow. Merch. Like, yeah, black and yellow belongs to Wu Tang. <laughs> <laughs> Do not give it to the Proud Boys. It's ridiculous. That's crazy. That's like the whole, and I know this is gonna tick people off, but that's like the whole okay thing. If I if it makes me laugh that people that's the whole white power thing, get something oh, the, like WP yeah. or whatever. I, Someone it's been like, okay for a long time. Like, hey, Mister, how you doing? The only good thing about Kanye are the African drums on Love Lockdown. Sounds amazing. I agree. And you know what? I still um, love like original Kanye with, um, you know, she's not a gold digger, you know. And he literally married Kim Kardashian. 
Like, I like um, old Kanye, you know, but he's crazy. Again, um, how do you separate the artist from his music? Uh, skits. Are you a Michael Jackson fan? Uh-oh. I see where this is going. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know what yes, I'm saying? Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. Like, like, how do you separate the artist from their in their infractions? Like, You're right. Caitlyn, we all forget that Caitlyn Jenner killed somebody on Pacific Coast Highway in California and got away with it because she's rich. Yeah. Because she's multi whatever. Because she's a she's a Kardashian. If that was any of us, we we would be in prison under the prison, forgotten, you know. For so, real. like, you know, there's definite double standards, you know. Famous people, rich people, they like I'm I'm weird. I don't give those people a pass, you know. But oh, yeah. Just because they're, <laughs> they 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 starred in a movie I like doesn't mean they get to go out and murder somebody, you know. Snoop Dogg said it the best. Uh, just because I rolled you a joint doesn't mean we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that's that. that. That's literally like from Gin and Juice or one of those that songs, cool. but it's true, you know. But even uh, I don't know. I and you know even online. There's people that I don't get along with or I don't like. I just stopped associating with them. Like, okay. You know what? I would always jokingly say this, but um, uh, Will Smith and I broke up. The second he, he slapped Chris Rock, we broke up. I'm not a Will Smith, Will Smith fan that much anymore. Man, you know what I'm I saying? Agree. I've seen every movie he's ever put out. I even saw um, the movie about the... Um, about uh, ver about Venus and Serena, it made me cry. I still will not watch another. I, you know, Emancipation looked um, it looked interesting, but then I was like, Will Smith, I'm so mad at you. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. I was just doing the same thing. Like, look, like, ah, uh, nope, Will Smith. You know, I'm still not over that. As someone who has acted like Will Smith, you get a court date. Will Smith didn't get a court date, <laughs> right? And it, and even if you if it was anybody else in LA County, they would have got a court date. It's kids, if you'd walked up and slapped um Chris Rock, you would still be in jail right now. Oh god. It would have beat the <laughs> shit out of me. Rose me they, out of there. <laughs> that's what they did to the guy who ran up on Dave Chappelle. They couldn't even hide it because we live in the cell phone era. The cops bumped him up. He he looked like a, a he looked like a cartoon character, you know. I agree. You know what? I agree, Mister. I agree. I'm the same way, but like I'm harsh. I'm harsh. Like if you hurt my feelings, I burn that bridge. I'm like scorched earth, you know. But a lot of people are not like that, you know. I okay. Again. Would you listen? Do you listen to R. Kelly? <laughs> Not for a long time. <laughs> R. Kelly is doing hard time because he dated minors. You know what I'm saying? Like, I if R. Kelly came on the radio, I would switch it off. But R. Kelly's been excommunicated, so he's not on the radio anymore. Like, you really don't catch, you really don't catch his stuff. You know. Yeah. Something would you watch a movie with Hunter Coat to pole, you know? Yeah. <laughs> would you watch a movie if Jesse Smollett was in it? The guy who lied about getting beat up by white supremacists, but it oh, was really that, oh, two Nigerians that he paid. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, oh god, no. And you know what? There's a flip side to that. There's people who don't like me who would who would post the same questions. You know, the world's a big place. You oh, know, yeah. I choose not to participate in certain insanities. You know, like um, my ex-wife loved the Kardashians. I haven't seen that show in um, 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> 
I haven't. No, how's my son? Thirteen. I haven't seen that show in eleven years. You know, I'm just not a fan. I I do. I won't even lie. It's because I'm a Slayer fan. Um, I have a kill the Kardashians T-shirt. Fair, but fair. It, but <laughs> it was on a Slayer website, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Let me compulsive buy, compulsively buy that yeah. at three thirty in the morning. <laughs> in there. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of which, uh oh. What did somebody compulsively buy? Whenever I go out in the middle of nowhere, I don't have Wi-Fi. So my job, I went out and bought this, not realizing, A, I am not tech savvy. And B, this is way fancier than I thought it was. Oh, wow. But it, this is uh, its own Wi-Fi. Oh, And wow. I have to set it up and like... Um, <laughs> I thought it was going to be this big. I should really read dimensions. I am really <laughs> bad. You know why? When, when, um, as an American, I'm mad enough to admit when it comes to European math, I'm just like, Oh, it looks right. <laughs> that looks right. Whatever. I want it now. I hope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my my most recent purchase here is uh for uh I got um I'm doing the, the Big Brother program with uh, this kid, and uh he asked for a, a Lego set, and I got a. Oh. What the? Hold on, hold that up. That's not. Do you just you're like oh that's just any Lego set? No, that's the effing pyramid of effing. Oh wow, that's that's so dank. That is yeah, so... I think he's gonna like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What did you did you special order that? Yeah, Amazon. <laughs> R. Kelly, very talented, good voice, and twisted mind. R. Kelly was um it was gross. And the one thing that makes me so angry, the entire community knew, um, or everyone around him knew. And no one said anything until the exposing R. Kelly. Like, let me tell you, if I have a 15 year old, she's not going out with a grown man. It's just that simple. You, 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 you it's not going to happen around me, you know? So, and if you know what's happening, you're not just going to sit on your ass and tell, you know, like, oh, oh, he's been arrested. I knew that was happening the whole time. I'm like, everybody's seen my video of me getting offended by my neighbor. Imagine if if somebody messed with my family. <laughs> uh, right. I'm gonna go full ham, you know. So <laughs> that there's a lot of bad parenting that goes on. If there's a lot of bad parenting that goes on, if a grown man can walk in your house and date a minor, no, no, I don't care if if the president of the United States walked in. Ah, no, sir, no. <laughs> no. So, did the parents catch any flack for this? I uh, um no, but after the documentary, because there's the surviving R. Kelly, okay, and after that documentary, um, you know, I I I I watch. I'm obsessed with Black Twitter. I watch a lot of people talking trash on YouTube. I follow a lot of YouTubers. The first question everyone asked is. Where were the parents? Like both parents, both parents are sitting there saying my daughter dated a grown man. Like, okay, bro. Okay, bro. Good for you. Why'd you let it happen? Yeah. You know, like my son um, can't go to the park without two references in the ankle monitor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I, I just, and maybe because I'm over, I'm an overprotective parent. I'm a hover parent. So I don't know, but no, I don't care if you're famous. If you're famous, that's even more red flags for me. No, for real. Like you can, you can get and do anything you want, but you're going to come and hang out over here. Like, no, there's something wrong with you. With my 15 know? year old daughter, 16 year old daughter. No, no. And you know, I'm old. Okay. I'm so old that. When my older sister would um, go out on dates and a guy had a, when she got to the car phase, my father 
would literally clean a shotgun on the table while another loaded gun was on the tables, uh, calmly talking to this scared young man, saying, hey, I'm a Vietnam vet. I'm crazy. If you mess with my daughter, there's nowhere on earth that you can hide where I will not find you, you know? And, I, and as a little kid, I saw my father do this repeatedly. And guess what? Those mofos dropped my sister off at 10 o'clock. 9.59, they were in front of yeah. the house, you know? <laughs> Because they knew that my father was crazy, you know. So, I ah, for R. Kelly is a sick individual. He's a creep. He deserves to be in jail. But so do a lot of people who enabled that man or his managers. And, and it's not just R. Kelly. Do you know who Orlando Brown is? He was on the That's So Raven show. He's basically, oh, you're going to look him up and you're going to discover a world of somebody. He is what happens when Hollywood, when you're a child actor. He's just a complete mess. And he's on the real drugs, not the fun ones that make you sleepy, happy, hungry. <laughs> he's on like, he's on real hardcore drugs. And the sad thing is like, he is what happens when the industry chews you up and spits you out. It's really. Are you googling them right now or what? I, I'm on his Wikipedia. As we <laughs> oh, he's sad. If you look at the pictures of him now, like there's videos where he got knocked out being on too much drugs. Like it's just, it's so sad to see what he's done to himself. Um, he's he's literally been chewed up and spit out by um, by Hollywood. It's really sad. It was, what, is, what does that mean? He was witnessed. In 2021, by his wife and son. What does that mean? You know, that's you, you stumped me. Maybe in court, they were like state's evidence against him or something. Yeah, that, that's just, that's weird, right? Like it's it's a it's just a random sentence in his in his per, it's just <laughs> in a personal life. He was witnessed by. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> Sometimes at Wikipedia, they they're lacking. Sometimes yeah, they're. <laughs> Especially when they go through their like you need to pay us phase when you get like six screens of like we'll give you the information, but you're getting this for free. <laughs> Photograph walking down the street barefoot carrying a box of wine. <laughs> Classy. You know what? And it's sad. Like we um laugh at drug abuse and like meth is the only drug on earth that bores holes in your brain. You can come back from heroin. You can come back from anything. But meth literally makes you uh, mentally disabled. If, and that's It'll if you smoke your brain. Yeah. And it's like the real 80s commercial of like, this is your brain on drugs, you know. And Orlando Brown admitted to being high off that stuff. You know. God. And it's made him um, insane. And you can watch it in real time. You know, I love watching like old news shows because it, because sometimes they'll say something and I'm like, oh, you are so wrong. You are so, you are, because you have the benefit of history. So when you're watching the, the digression of somebody like that, you have the benefit of history because now we document everything. Mm -hmm. We better, better or for worse, you know, we document everything as a society. And so you can see him being from a child actor, total altar boy, perfect to being cracked out for real. Like it's sad. It's just sad. Oh yeah. <laughs> when I, um, when I was a correctional officer for a while, <clears throat> like, um, we, it was this, uh, you know, relatively young lady who uh, came in, you know, and she was always just completely spun out. And she was bad. Like, it, her sucked up meth paw, you know, everything, meth sores, no teeth, just bad, right? But if you looked back, like, I've had her progression for the last, like, three, four years. Like, she, like uh, she started off as this, you know, beautiful young lady, 18 years mm -hmm. old, you know, and you just see the meth taking her life and now it's just faces of meth is real. Man. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff is real, dude. That's like, 
Um, I've seen some really bad car accidents. When I was a kid, they'd always show us like red asphalt to scare us. No, nah, bro, that's real. Do they show that anymore? Not no, because the kid, they they're like I I think uh, my generation was the last because when I was in eighth grade, they showed us a video of a live birth. Yeah. yeah, I was. They, yeah, they showed us that in, I think, eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> they don't do that, that now. Dramatic, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they don't they do that. Like an alien. Like, well, they want to. They want to scare you. They're like, oh, you want to have babies? Scared. Scare you straight, you know. <laughs> but like, um, I know they don't do it anymore because my son's in the eighth grade. You know, they're they're extremely sensitive nowadays, you know. No, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> God, do you no, think there's... do you think is that a good or a bad thing that we censor um um everyday natural things? Oh ah. Uh, well that that's tough because you know there's a lot of everyday natural things that but no, no, I, I don't think it's a good thing. You know, give me uh, a... I, Give me one quick second. Yeah. yeah. Continue. I'll be right back. Yeah. Because there's, there's obviously, you know, you would think, thinking out loud to everybody, you know, there, there's, there's things that are especially, you know, age inappropriate that, you know, you know, you don't want to be exposing necessarily to, you know, a child, but, but in the right environment, like, like sex ed, you know, obviously you're not going to show them, you know, inappropriate you know stuff but uh you know you obviously you have your your whatever they provide the, the learning materials you know so in the right context hmm. but yeah yeah it could complete censorship yeah if a child's going to be exposed to something it needs to be exposed to them under the right context and i think the context is the most important part yeah, yeah, that's what I'll go with. Oh man, I've been thinking, I've been thinking out loud to uh, to the to to everybody, and I think since the, the most important thing is context behind everything, and if, if you completely censor everything for a child and they have to learn on their own, they're not going to learn the appropriate context behind you know something. When I was a, a little kid, my father took my cousin and I to see um, cows being born. Do you think modern people would freak out if like, well, it's different when you're family, but like, would you freak out if someone took your kid to watch cows be being born? <laughs> that would be, I, I would have, there might be some red flags. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, they were like, oh, this is nature, you know, like, Get your hands in there, kid. Pull their feet out, you know. Oh, oh I was raised by hillbillies. By, like, but, my dad was a real life. <laughs> like, I, I remember, like, I, I was, you know, kind of big into duck hunting when my kiddo was growing up. And so he never had, you know, any fear. Like, he'd love to get in there and help me clean the ducks and everything like that. And I remember one time he was just this this little guy. And he had uh, just we chopped off one of the feet, you know, while we we're cleaning it. And he just, you know, has one of the, you know, the duck feet pulling on the tendon, make it. And he just thought, oh, it just busted his, you know, busted his belly laughing at that for the longest time, just walking around the house. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, do you know, farm kids in Iowa, they grow up with shotguns and trucks. You know, they're driving, they're 10 years old driving around the farm, you know. Oh, my like, God. You know, I had a friend who was from Alaska and he ended up moving back because he was like, dude, I'm a feral human. He's like, I can't live around you guys. Like, he's like, I'm a feral human being because he he grew up out in the middle of nowhere and he just could not take living in the city, you know. But then I had another friend who lived out in the middle of nowhere in Alaska and he got injured. And um, he almost died from a broken leg. And he moved back to L.A. when his leg healed. And he said, dude, he, he, he basically said we have power in numbers. That's so true. You break a leg in the city, you can call an ambulance. You know, you break your leg out in the middle of Alaska, you hope you're, you could drive with your left foot. <laughs> yeah. 
but I hope you don't bleed out before you get there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and, and we, we, I, I guess living in an incorporated area, I take that for granted, you know, or even availability of food. Like, absolutely. We live, we live somewhere where, uh, like, lettuce, alfalfa, hay, that's produced in California. Like, there's some guy throwing a bale of hay to their horse in Iowa, and it's from California, you know? So, when we go to the grocery store, a lot of our food is here, but there are certain places that are not like that, you know? Especially up north, I noticed that the beef was more fresh because the cows are literally, like, you know, literally right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, like maybe it was farm like to a play, farm to fork, fork, farm to fork. Yeah, farm to and fork. that's real. <laughs> maybe it was more psychosomatic, and it was due to environment, you know. But for some reason, the the beef tasted better, you know. But yeah. I was living in Cowtown. I was literally like, I was working at a breadstick factory, which was next to a slaughterhouse, you know. A lot of people don't know about uh, about Central and Northern California. Now yeah. it produces most of the pork produce for, for at least this side of America. Oh, most yeah, most most America in general. We we're at the breadbasket here. Yeah, and and it was um, Japan and China until um, our Orange Emperor got rid of that. Yeah, <laughs> he hated. He absolutely hated California. So he was like, how can I how can I cripple California? Because Japan bought most of our beef. They loved our beef, and then Trump killed the contract, you know. <laughs> yeah, like it, any any way that man could try to try to hurt any sort of you know liberal oh bought. Ah! Uh, oh, yeah, oh, somebody got it. Yeah, yeah, I can um, do it better. I can do it better on my phone. All right, you're right. Oh, uh, yeah. someone's got it. Yeah, I think somebody got it. I didn't. <laughs> oh, it's not showing up. That was quick. Whoever got it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to whoever got it. Or maybe it's just not showing up. Right. Yeah, it could be just delayed. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, like anything honored. that man could do to to hurt, you know, a, a liberal state, you know, he he would he would jump at the choice. I think the, I think it's shocking to me because no president has openly expressed their hatred since Nixon. And that Nixon, tell you something. Nixon was recorded. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but um, I really respect Nixon. I saw this documentary about how. There was this Vietnam protest going on right outside the White House. Um, he was smoking a cigarette. Good old Tricky Dick was smoking a cigarette. And he's like, you know, I'm going to go talk to these guys. The Secret Service was like, we're going with you. He's like, no, you're not. The President of the United States walked over to a protest by himself and walked up to a crowd of people and was like, I'm here to talk to you and talk to a bunch of Vietnam vets. If you ever get bored, look at the footage on YouTube. Um, oh. Richard Nixon, like, I respect him for that. And he only had a small detail with him because no one's going to let the president, no yeah. one is going to let the president walk out by himself. But he said, like, no. The, yeah, the president can't even order the Secret Service. To yeah. Stand yeah. Like, nah. <laughs> we, yeah. But he had a detail with him, but he walked out and he's like, look, dude, I'm here to talk to you. That's you know, so it impressive. weirdly made me respect him like i was like wow that's manly like i respect people who are willing to talk to the opposite side you know because in the end we're all from the same you know they're from the same country yeah and that was his mindset you know and people don't have that mindset anymore like hey bro we're from the, like we were born under the same sun like i'll help you out you know absolutely it's just so divisive and then so like there there there's stories of you know like you know 
cars trapped in the snow and the tow truck would come by and see a, you know, a, a Biden sticker or, you know, vice versa or a Trump sticker and say, you know what, fuck you. And then drive off, you know, it's like, come on now. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like that here too. Especially like, um, a lot of people have the, a bumper sticker that says the Joe and the Ho got to go. I see it all the time. And I you know, know what's funny? It's on a certain side of town. It's only on one side of town. But people have been radicalized. Do you know old school politics was like, oh, you're voting for Ralph Nader? You're dumb. And that was it. <laughs> that was it. Or, oh, oh, you voted for you, you voted for George Bush the first? Good for you. He, you know, like that was it. Or like you voted for Ross Perot? Did you see his ears? That <laughs> that was it, you know. And it's like nowadays, like oh, you're this or that. I hate you. You you can't stand next to me. It's we have become so polarized. It's not even worth it. That's why I started. I got all into UK politics because I have nothing invested in it. You know, it, it's just America is, man. It's it's just so idiotic what we have turned into. And you know, it's it's funny. The more open our minds get, the more we hate each other. The more access we have to each other, we hate each other. Man, yeah, yeah, and and, and so many people who can hide behind the uh, anonymity and you know, become keyboard warriors yeah, totally. are not afraid to voice their opinion on the matter. That's why I had to take a Twitter break because. Um, people are losing their damn mind. People have lost their damn mind on Twitter. You must be out your damn mind. I, 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 I'm not kidding you. From the day that Elon, um, Elon like took over, all of a sudden the f, the f word, the f word, the n word, like all this crazy stuff just started popping up out of nowhere on Twitter. You know, and I'm not saying. Um, I don't know. I'm not pro censorship, but censor yourself, bro. Like censor yourself. Like don't want. I, I don't walk around talking like that. I don't know. Uh, it's become a dumpster fire, an yeah. absolute just dumpster fire. And um, people keep on telling me like, oh, maybe it's the stuff you're watching. Like it's following me. It's following. <laughs> I, I was in a, um, I was in a, um, a hockey forum on Twitter and someone typed in the N-word just to see if they can do it. And everybody was like, get out of here, bro. We're talking about hockey, you know? Oh, fuck, man. But he's just started typing it in to see if he can get away with it. And he did. You know, so I don't know. Twitter is just, it's not, like I said, it's not for the faint of heart. Twitter is like LA. It's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> oh, man. Do you think, do you think it's going to die? Twitter? Yeah. I think it. Because I'll tell you like Facebook forum, you know, and it's. Do you remember Facebook? Like, like 15 years ago, it was crazy. Facebook. Like I loved Facebook, you know, now it's just, I, I swear every person I talk to on there is a robot. You know, <laughs> and yeah, like, yeah. Like when when Facebook came around, it was kind of you know in, in a in a competition with MySpace at the time, and and now MySpace got oh that got bad quick. And then <laughs> yeah, Facebook it was it was you know kind of the wild west at the time, and it was good. And it, you know it was before people started developing you know major bot technology and bot farms and things like that. But now it's 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 you know. It is what it is. It's awful. It's <laughs> awful. And you know, I'm not, um, I'm all for free speech. But again, you have to have some discretion. You can't like, what people don't realize is that free speech in America, the concept of free speech is, the, is so that the government can attack you for your opinion. That does not stop the fellow citizen for chin checking you because you, because you're an idiot, you know? <laughs> yeah. A lot so, of people really misunderstand what free speech really is. They haven't a clue. 
They have a clue on what it is. Yeah, it doesn't mean that your boss can't fire you. It doesn't mean that your wife can't divorce you. It's just that the cops can't arrest you. And even to that, there's, you know, limitations. Exactly. And, and because, quite honestly, they can. You know, that's why, that's why um, when I see, like, the, the super raw, raw, like, um, I saw someone driving with a Blue Lives Matter flag. And I'm like, I don't think you understand what freedom is. I don't think you understand that that same agency you're rooting for could come in your house at any moment and claim eminent domain over you at any moment. You know, the ATF, honestly, um, where I live, the ATF, they make more mistakes than they do victories. Honest. I'm just being honest. I, I think they, I saw a, like a stat <laughs> once that like uh, 10% of like the no-knock warrants that they serve are at wrong addresses. Thank you. Yeah. And they're not going to believe you when you're like, bro, that's Johnny's next door. Yeah, They're going to they're gonna kick the door in and beat you up. Exactly. You know? You're going to be laid out in front of your family. <laughs> God help you. Yo, like if you have a gun, like, you know, like, oh, you're, you're not you legal gun. You're going to get shot. Like, in your own house. Yeah. You know, and, oh, somebody kicks down your door. You don't think it's a cop. You know, you're, you think never, especially around here. Like, um, I literally, if you see me peering off to the side, I have four cameras and a ring. <laughs> we're crazy around here like we are you know and unfortunately every i do a lot of walking with my son every um almost every house in this neighborhood has a camera on it we've turned you know it's the era we live in we've turned into um like las vegas almost you know For real, it's like everything's it's under surveillance I don't know. Do you think that's a good or a bad thing that everything we do now is documented? It's it's it definitely makes the you know being a bad guy harder to get away with. But I, I don't like the 1984 feel to it. I don't like you know Big Brother being literally you know able to see anything. I really don't like the cops being able to utilize that technology against us, like license exactly. plate readers and things like that. It, it's, exactly. Exactly. There, where, where the problem is, is where do you draw the line of too much policing? You know what I'm saying? Because again, I live in MAGA country, okay, and I and I get in these arguments with people all the time, like, okay, like you think you're so free, let's go fishing right now without a license, and watch what right. happens when they catch us at the lake. They're gonna call the sheriffs and get us for trespassing. And then they're going to um, get us for not having a license. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I just, I don't think a lot of people realize it's not what they think it is, you know? Yeah. And uh, Border Patrol. And they're like 100 miles from any any boundary, any yep. border. Like, Sacramento like is within Border Patrols, you know? It's like, like oh, it is, dude. it's the um ice ice like if you see an like ice got tired of people throwing stuff at their cars that they no longer have ice on their vans on their trucks on anything because when immigration rolls up people are like boo <laughs> <laughs> nobody likes immigration <laughs> i've seen a raid in hollywood where people literally were standing in front of the cops Karen's. So you think you think Karen's are bad, but I saw a Karen stand in front of an INS agent and say, "No, why? Why do you like full on Karen? Like I'm born here. <laughs> you will not take these people. <laughs> that doesn't go well. You know, <laughs> that's the one thing I like about LA is that um, the cops." They don't care what race you are. <laughs> they'll they'll just fuck you, you up. <laughs> yeah. No, they'll arrest you. I've seen um, like real life Karens get arrested. I have. I've seen people assault people and they think they're um, they're privileged or above the law and the cops cuff and stuff them. 
you know. They they arrest politicians here. You know, we recently, you know, there's a politician that got arrested. And I'm like, you know what? For once, the cops are actually doing their damn job. You know, <laughs> no, that's what they're there for. Yeah, absolutely. The, the sheriffs are here to serve us papers because they, they're the only ones who can legally serve us. Get cats out of trees for the fire department <laughs> and arrest dirty politicians. Yeah, it's amazing what what the actual sheriff's department like is is in charge of. Like, like they're also in like in most jurisdictions, they're also the coroners. So yeah, it's like it's, it's I crazy. oh man, I befriended somebody who was a coroner. I worked at a subway. It was tw- this is when I was in my early twenties. Gosh. This was literally 22 years ago. Um, I worked at a 24-hour subway on Sunset Boulevard. It was one of the most interesting jobs I've ever had. He'd come in every night. We'd smoke cigarettes. He he was the homie. And one day, I because he his um his he wore a different uniform, but his uniform just said LA County, and he drove a white van. And so one day I asked him, I was like, "What do you do for a living?" He's like, "Come here." I'll show you. Uh oh. <laughs> this guy every night would eat his lunch with bodies in in his van. Every night, and I asked him because I'm jumpy. I asked him. I said, "Bro, like, like you legitimately um, do this?" He's like, "Honestly, I'm desensitized." And he and I'll never forget this. He looks at me. He's like, "They're not going anywhere." Yeah. <laughs> or he was going like, to get any deader. Yeah, you know, like common sense. <laughs> but I, you know, any job you become desensitized. I, uh, where I work, there's a, a Gibbons farm, you know, like the monkeys. The monkey, yeah. Um, I don't even hear them anymore. And they're going full ape. <laughs> they're going full monkey. Gibbons are loud as hell. And, um, my son was up there the other day and he's like, how can you not hear the monkeys? <laughs> he's like, how can you not hear that? And I'm like, bro, I have tuned that out 15 years ago. You know, <laughs> you human beings are funny. You know, Isaiah with his autism, whenever we go into stores, he looks at me and he's like, why do they play the cringiest music? But he's listening. He can hear it. He has better hearing. Me, a man. Tone it out. Yeah, I'm like, I'm more concerned that mozzarella sticks have gone up. <laughs> People want to riot about gas. Like, I'm more mad about food. For real. Like, I will fight you. Once my stoner food becomes unaffordable, I will be fighting people. When I can't have mozzarella sticks and tortinas, tortino pizza rolls, <laughs> I will riot. But the good, the one good thing is that my unhealthy eating um, has led my son to a life of eating salads. Like he is so healthy, it's embarrassing. Good, it puts <laughs> you to shame. <laughs> the younger generation, they Google everything. Like he, he has this whole regimen. I'm like, where'd you get that? He's like, oh, blah blah blah. And I'm like, you know what? It's a healthy habit. I won't dog it. Yeah. You know, but, uh, I'm not stop listening to right wing radio. <laughs> oh gosh, you know what? No, like, I think life is gonna balance itself out because he does watch that stuff, but he hangs out with mainly black and Hispanic people. He'll be all right, he'll be, he'll be you, know, right. you know, it's so funny. Like, he gets into pace with people, and um, people are like, We don't live like that. <laughs> Nah, <laughs> no, because I, I, I tell him all the time, like politics are local. All politics are local. Like you won't care until something around you happens. And then all of a sudden you're in city hall, you know, you're fighting the mayor, you know? And so I try to tell him like, and I, I, I want him to see the other side. I want him to see both sides. Like I'm open. Um, as long as he doesn't become like Ben Shapiro, I don't care. You know, then you'll have to have a sit down talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want, 
I want my son to be different than me. I want him to have different views. You know, I want him to, and feel free to express those views. Think for because um, off work in 40 minutes on my way home watching this show. Nice hack. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up soon. Yeah, it's good. I feel like done. torturing my throat a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I've I've gone this long. Tomorrow I will have no voice. God, yeah, you're gonna be <laughs> fucked up. I'm gonna be writing notes and shit. <laughs> no, everyone around me is going to enjoy the silence. <laughs> everyone around me is gonna be like, yes. Yes, he lost his voice again. Because I, I become a mime all of a sudden. I'm like, sorry. You have to get like an app, an app that just has like an even more annoying voice. So like, like every time you need to say something, like, well, I've I've had the same voice for twenty. Hey, Doc, how's it going? What's going on, Doc? I'm about to I'm um, about to end this, but you can hop in. I lost my voice. And um, <laughs> I'm not wearing hockey pads. <laughs> that is my favorite line. I put it in some of my videos. I like. I was torn with the Christian Bale Batman, but I loved the Christian Bale Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so is your number did, two Batman? Where's the trigger? Where's the trigger? I loved Christian Bale. I'm sorry. He's a shit human being, but I loved Christian <laughs> And like the the whole story when he gets his back broken by Bane. Um, God. You know. Well, Doc, hop in. <laughs> I'm uh the the um the stream is in the chat. I'm like half delirious. <laughs> I'm like dreaming of what I'm going to eat after this. Bye bye, Liz. Enjoy your 7 Eleven food. Uh, that reminds hey, me. I go off. I go off on 7 Eleven food. So, so where I live, like one, one of the main reasons I moved to the, this specific place here was there was, you know, it's, it's pretty close to my work, but. There's a literally like a 7 Eleven, like a two minute walk from me. And they just closed it. And I was like, no. Uh, <laughs> when I lived in Portland, I lived next door to a 7 Eleven. Like, literally, I could see it from my window. I had a slurpy habit. My, you know, when I was younger, I would do the dumbest things. I would drink a slurpy and smoke a blunt every night. And one night I was like, I wonder why I have sleeping problems. Maybe it's because every night after work, I would juice myself up with a giant Slurpee, you know? <laughs> like shortly before this, uh, this 7-Eleven got uh, shut down. And, and actually, this is probably one of the reasons it did get shut down was I, uh, I was going in there, you know, to get my, well, believe it or not, I was to get cash for my, uh, my weed dealer. But um <laughs> I go in there and I'm talking to the uh, the lady up front, and this dude comes in and starts ranting some pretty you know pretty racial slurs, right? Oh, like great. so dropping the end bomb, dropping you know about Indian people and Hispanics, and I could Yikes. see that the young lady behind the counter who looked you know partially Hispanic was incredibly uncomfortable and didn't know how to react to it. So I just turned to the dude and like, could you not be a racist piece of shit, please? <laughs> you know, and and he just became one of those instant people who come right up into your face, you know. And I'm like, dude, I'm not here. I'm literally put my hands up like this. I'm not here to fight you, man. Just don't be racist. It's not that hard. And he just kept pushing it, pushing me, and started swung on me. I you know what threw I... threw him into the you know, into the glass that they had there. He bounced off of that. His girlfriend came in and then jumped on my back and gouged out my eyes. What? While I'm still trying to fight this guy. 
And while they got, they, they, you know, the two of them were eventually able to tackle me to the ground because it's two of them now and I didn't have my eyes. Um, and then they ran away. And that's like, crazy. Uh, yeah, the lady helped me up and. Yeah, and they, uh, everything that I just purchased that was destroyed, the store was like, okay, we'll give you brand new. Everything else is, you know, no worries. And would you would you like a Slurpee on top of it? And, like, you know, the, the lady up front was very, very you know, <laughs> appreciative of, of, of the situation. And she called the cops. And the uh, the other guy there, you know, I talked to was helping me pick up my stuff and help me find my glasses and headphones. And he's like, dude, you know, <coughs> I'm, I'm half Mexican and – Thank you, you know, for standing up for this, you know. But yeah, dude. Hey, Doc, how's it going? All fucked up. Um, I uh, said my app. Uh, actually, I think I'll post a picture of it into your Discord. Oh, that's a picture of my face, just like with a with a finger in my eye. Was, uh, oh, that's <laughs> that's crazy. How you doing tonight, Doc? I guess I'm hanging in there. Uh, uh, feeling a tad bit chest coldy myself. I might have to go out and get some cough syrup later. I um You sound rough uh, around the edges, kid. Oh, yeah, I, lost my, <laughs> I lost my voice. I'm doing full Batman tonight. Full Batman. <laughs> I um I, <clears throat> at my house I have a fully stocked CVS. I hoard over the counter drugs. <laughs> I seriously hoard over the counter drugs because I don't want to go to the store when I'm feeling crummy. Indeed. So Sudafed sinus, Sudafed headache, Tylenol. <clears throat> you don't need drugs. You don't need alcohol. All you need is NyQuil and Sudafed. <laughs> Drink as much as you want. It's the 13th step. Are you drunk? No, I have a cold. I'm high as a kite and my teeth are green. Merry fucking Christmas. <laughs> Where I'm from, the 13th step <laughs> is um, having sex with every woman at the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> they used to say that, like, don't be a 13th stepper. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you think about it, when you get people sobering up in a personal situation... Of course they're going to have sex. Of course. What else mm -hmm. are they going to do? They're sobering up. They're bored. Of course they're going to have sex. Chasing every high they can find. Oh, and and sex a, is a high. It's the it's biggest a healthy, high. It's a healthy one, though. Depend. <laughs> Depending. <laughs> Who are you hanging out with? <laughs> <laughs> I just need to go fucking Facebook. That's what I need to do. What's that? I'm a little more drunk than I thought I was. And I'm like trying to find that, that picture of me with my ass kicked. Oh my gosh. I'm I um I have a huge thing of pot in here. When I first started drinking my tea, I'm like, uh oh. I had this that's why when you came in, skits, I'm like, oh, I'm so happy. Cause I was ripped. I was ripped when I first started drinking my tea. I'm glad I could be helpful for your, uh, for your channel, <laughs> my friend. It ended up getting me more high than helping my voice, but it worked. <laughs> and this is swag. Like, this is stuff that I forgot I had, and I found it. And I'm like, oh, I can drink it. So pot and tea is real. Damn it. I gotta figure out. So, Doc, well, what's the weather like uh, in Iowa? Uh, last I checked my app, I think it said uh, I think it said 13, but the real fuel brings it down to negative 2. Oh, I would... Uh, I would it's fucking cold it. here. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I, I'm experiencing such shrinkage my dick is running from my monster. It's saying, ah, and running in. <laughs> Do you know, in Southern California, there's this illusion that we have warm water. Our water is Arctic freezing in our ocean. Hmm. So people will come here and they're like, 
they 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 experience immediate shrinkage <laughs> <laughs> because they don't realize um, immediately freeze our our you know it could be a hundred degrees outside and our water is forty six degrees. <laughs> Yeah, not as warm as you think. At the Dude, hotel, our just... pool is heated, so. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, as to, uh, oh man, when the second you said heated pool, I was like, well, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you sound like you could you benefit from a, a dip in a spa or something. You know, nothing's worked. It's because I'm a, I'm a fucking loud mouth. And so what happens is that, like, I should have stopped talking, and I just have not. <laughs> <laughs> just need uh, warm fluids and give your vocal cords a rest. I'm going to watch. Warm fluids down your throat. <laughs> I'm going to watch uh, <laughs> coffee and cigarettes when this is over. <laughs> I've never seen it before. Really? Bought, it's been a long time. Is it, Well, it. I... I said this earlier, like there's certain movies from the nineties and from the early two thousands where I'm like, I, people are like, you haven't seen that movie. My life was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bunch of movies I haven't seen from that particular year because my life was just shit at the time. You know, I only saw it cause we had the independent film channel back in the day with our cable package. Yeah, I, I've seen excerpts. I've only seen the part with uh, RZA, Jizza, and Bill Murray. <laughs> I've only I, seen I can't even really remember it. It's been so long. <laughs> but, like, it's so rare. I bought Godzilla 2000. I, it's, I, <laughs> I, I love cheesy movies, but, like, um, it's so rare that I find a movie that I haven't seen. Well, that's that's the one with Matthew Broderick in it, right? I see you've seen it. <laughs> yeah, it. That's a good one. Uh, I love this movie. It, it is it is a good movie. Um, it has gotten a lot of flack, but my oh, man, you know Hank Azaria is in it. Yeah, he's, he's the camera guy, and he's like half the voices on The Simpsons, <laughs> and uh, he's a great actor. And I just love that part where. Where the where Godzilla looks like it steps on him, but he but he was luckily between the toes, and then the Godzilla walks away, and he's standing there just freaking out because he almost got crushed. It's just a funny scene. I just I, it, I I the reason I'm staring off in the side is because that happened literally five minutes ago. Sweet, like, literally. <laughs> it's probably my favorite scene. Oh, Liz. Oh, Liz, I'm hungry. You're killing me. I love white powder donuts. I'm eating <laughs> beef <What's that? laughs> Oh, gosh. Do you know, I bought, I had such a problem with pepperoni that I would buy, like, the whole stick at the store and just eat it like it was beef jerky. Oh, I was just straight up ate an entire. Where is it? I literally just ate this while I was on your stream. I eat the. You know it's so <laughs> funny. I eat Dukes. I eat that same thing. I get them at Smart and Final. <laughs> Come oh, on at uh, Rayleigh's. Oh, that's so funny. So Skits Crasher, Crasher, maybe you should change your name to Jerk Beefy. <laughs> that is Doc. That's my that's gonna be my next porn name. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. That uh I'm not sure if I want to subscribe to that one. <laughs> you know what my porn star porn star name is, don't you? No. Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? You're making an omelet? That's awesome, <laughs> dude. That's it took me a second to figure out who this that's, is. This that's is quite the name for you. So everybody be nice huh? to cousin. This is cousin. Hi, cousin. We love who's, who's, cousin. Who's cousin? Hi, cousin. He's making an omelet. That's oh. awesome. Can I have one? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. Uh, my my porn star name is Head Cannon. <laughs> yeah. I guess let me look up my porn star name. Porn star name. 
You know, it's always some weird, like, like whatever, what the last thing you ate and the color of your underwear. <laughs> Mine would be, um, God, uh, plaid, plaid taco salad. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a weird Mexican. That's a terrible stripper name. That's mine, would be, mine would be white frosted mini wheats. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good one. Calculator. There you go. <coughs> All right. Porn star name generator. Here we go. Enter your name. Skits Crasher. <laughs> yeah. I. Do you know, I won't even generate. lie. I love. Those stupid things on the internet where they're like, your whole name really is you looking in the mirror. <laughs> I don't think they uh, understood. <laughs> I don't think they understood the assignment. Well, <laughs> hi, my name is Lex Jizz. <laughs> Lex Jizz. Uh, my name is Lex Jizz. It would work. <laughs> that would work. Oh, God. Okay. I, I am set not there. Great. There's not going to be a. A space between skits and crasher. Now what will we do? <laughs> oh, I like that one better. I like that one so much better. The humpy astronaut. <laughs> that sounds like a bar in Florida. I uh, I'll, I'll do that all the time. <laughs> in Cape Canaveral, like a lot of stuff is named for NASA. You know. Oh my god. <laughs> and if I type in my real name. I love 7-Eleven, Liz. <laughs> Liz knows that. But Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Racist. Racist. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just for fun, plug in Doc Fearsome. See what it says. Doc uh, Fearsome. <laughs> Mail. Generate. Oh, I like your name. Uh-oh. Corporal Cream. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> no fair. <laughs> uh, see here. I'm gonna put that in. is awesome. <coughs> Godless sewing. <coughs> see what he gets. If I spelled his name right. <laughs> Uh oh, what is it? Rick Quickie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish we had the power to change his. Uh... <laughs> what was mine? Corporal Cream? Yeah, or... yours is Corporal Cream. Corporal Cream. And Rick Quickie. Rick Quickie. Oh, God. What was mine? I already oh, forgot boy. it. Wait a second. Doc, I hope up. you know that I will now refer to you as Colonel Cream. <laughs> well, yeah. Colonel well, Colonel you're now uh, Rick Quickie. Oh, I like that. <laughs> slicky, slicky Ricky. Yeah, yeah. Rick Quickie. Rick Quickie. Well, I'm not what I used to be, so I am Rick Quickie. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, but Maxim. Do I want to be Butt Maxim? Oh, 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 oh. What if I just type in skits? Oh, thank you. Liz, you are awesome. You're on top of it. Private banger. I'll deal, I'll deal with that. I like that too. That's awesome. <laughs> Private banger. <laughs> Private banger reporting is ordered, ma'am. <laughs> Let's get this bang and banged out. <laughs> that works. That works. <laughs> That's it. I'm, I'm changing my name here. Do you I know, when I was a kid, my... My brother gave me like a huge box of those old box porns. I love those titles. One was called Ramen. It was called Ramen and Jammin. <laughs> <laughs> those old porn names were awesome. You know, they cared. They had sets. They had a production team. <laughs> Nowadays, it's uh, a bunch of people in a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> How would you react if you saw someone you knew um, 
like in a port? How would you react? Hmm. I'd be like, hey, all right. <laughs> if I, how would I act if I found somebody in a porn? Yeah. Somebody you knew in a porn. There's so, a, fun there's story a lady that. That, that went on to be a, a model at, from my graduating class. I'm a little surprised I haven't seen her in a porn. <laughs> <laughs> there's people in the community that, that have advertised their porn. That's different. What if it's somebody that like, what if you, what if you, you like went to go, you know, do your thing. You went on a video and you saw me. Wouldn't you be <laughs> like, oh, wow. <laughs> I'd watch that shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, so you gave my answer. It depends on who it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really funny. Um, there was this girl in high school. She hated me. Every time I saw her, she just had something <laughs> terrible. She dated a friend of mine. She hated me. I saw her on a Lexington, Lexington, I can't even say the name, Lexington Steel porn. I saw her and I was like, well, <laughs> maybe she, just was, she was just really into brown guys. <laughs> I, let me tell you, own. I don't judge. I just thought it was ironic. But then I Googled her, and guess what she found? She found Jesus. <laughs> they always do. That was my exact reaction, Skits Crasher. Your reaction was mine. <laughs> A friend of mine, like, because I asked him, I was like, hey, your ex-girlfriend... Like, you know, she does porn, and he was like, oh, man, that was years ago. He was like, she's a preacher now. <laughs> <laughs> she has her, she is, I, I won't say her name, but, you know, and, and, and I won't say her name because I see her in my hometown all the time. Good call. <laughs> she can anoint me any day. Hello. <laughs> hey, there's a reason why the pews are packed. <laughs> and I, I'm not anti-redemption I'm not anti like comeback stories you know but you know when you I look at people who started church they were like you know what I need to extort a bunch of money fast let's start a church <laughs> Think about it. Like, it's the only job in America where you don't have to pay taxes if you don't work for the federal government, you know? I do have a high school guidance counselor that, that told me I was a natural leader. So I have thought about starting a cult. <laughs> well, if you start a church, picks. if you start a church, you can um, you can not pay taxes and still run it like a cult. <laughs> How they do. <laughs> I was raised Catholic. You're kidding me? Between all the ceremony and judging, it is a cult with money. <laughs> yep. Well, there's pl there's plenty of people who argue that pretty much all religions are a cult or cultish. I would say that, but like, I've had Christians help me when I was down and out. And they, they, they didn't want anything in return. But I've also had Muslim people help me out. And they didn't want anything in return. You know, so it just depends. You know. I see a, a much younger. Uh, That's an awesome. Crasher. That's an awesome picture. It'd be a just. Uh, Groovy. Just, just, just got into a uh, country. When, Baghdad. when people ask you, like, do you want to donate uh, money to veterans? Do you tell them, I donated my 20s? <laughs> <laughs> my really? my uncle used to say that. He would be like, I gave my 20s. And he wasn't talking about money. <laughs> <laughs> and, and still to this day, you know, I belong to 
you know, every, you know, nearly every veteran organization under the sun, you know, veterans of foreign wars, American Legion, AMVETS, disabled American veterans. And awesome. I belong to each and every one of them, you know, so I have the most reach out so I can, you know, use that as a, as a prop board for my actual job, which is getting combat vets into counseling services. I think that's awesome. Awesome. That's a great job, dude. As, as a combat vet myself, like I, I, I needed these services. I didn't know they were around. It took it took me a while to to find them, and I found out that you know without them, I could very well have been just another statistic that you hear about. And it it brings me great joy that I can now hopefully with my career, if I can save a single soldier, single vet, that you know that that you just rethinks you know self harm, my whole goddamn career has been worth it. Then that's that's a, a grand opus for you if you can help one soldier. Exactly. <clears throat> that's awesome. There's a lot of people that that talk a lot and don't help other people. So I appreciate you for what you do. And that's Thanks. one of my biggest pet peeves because I I work with special needs adults and I'll hear someone say something and I'm like, how come we never see, hey man, we need people at the job right now. You know, like if you're so willing, come on down, you know? So I love people that are actually in the fight. Yeah. My, my life pretty much was revolves around for veterans. You know, it's, you know, during you know, my day job is, you know, getting counseling, you know, uh, you know, getting counseling services for vets during my off time, you know, I'm, I'm involved with all these organizations uh, on my on my side, you know, quote unquote side hustle. Yeah, I, uh, I, I help run a board for uh, housing uh, veterans uh, who are need help transitioning from you know, military life to civilian life and don't have the funds to have any place to live or get food. So we can set them up for a few months to a couple of years, help them get a job, help them get hooked up into the services, and make sure that when they leave, they're in a much better place. That's awesome. That's that is awesome. so great, and they and they definitely need the help transitioning back into civilian life because that's a very different way of living. <laughs> when I oh, lived when I lived in Portland, um, most of the heroin addicts on the streets were homeless vets. You know, it was so sad. I actually knew somebody who. Um, would pull his picture out and be like, look, I served my country. And he was just a rundown human being, you know, because of PTSD, because of not addressing his issues, you know? Yeah. With this organization, like I just graduated college and they offered me this job. It was, you know, about two, you know, 200 miles away, 300 miles away, still in California. But I had no money. I was a starving college student, right? I had no money to travel, no money for food, let alone money for rent and, you know, bills and everything like that to accept this job offer from the VA. You know, it could be a very good opportunity for me to start a career. Uh, to career. Totally. And then I found, you know, Vectors is the name of the organization. Uh, and, and there's... And ever since then, you know, ever since they've helped me out with, you know, I only needed them. To, I only needed to be there for six weeks, you know, enough to get my first paycheck underneath me, to get, you know, everything settled. And ever since then, I've been with them. We've, you know, uh, I've joined their, uh, their, their board. I'm the secretary for their board. And we've expanded out so many programs. We now do a weekly food pantry for veterans. We're, you know, 50 veterans a week are now coming through us. And we're giving them hook, we're getting them hooked up with Trader Joe's and Rayleigh's food. That's awesome. It's just become such nice. a big organization that I'm so happy to be a part of. <laughs> that is that is greatness. You're you're doing awesome. Yeah, the average, person, the average person does not care. It's actually something that like when I got online, it was a point of anger for me because I would hear people say things and I'm like, that sounds great, but do you actually implement it? You know? So I love hearing that. I love hearing that. Yeah. Because, you know, there were certain points in my life where I needed help and, and there were people that helped me and they saved me from doing something stupid from, you know what I'm saying? Or putting myself in a compromising situation. 
So I appreciate people like that. Yeah. And, and these organizations, like so many of them, you know, are at least the ones that I really, really intently associate myself with, like, like, uh, the Vietnam, or, uh, Vietnam veterans of America and, um, especially, uh, uh, veterans of foreign wars. Like I, you know, had recently, uh, uh, an issue happened in my life and my mom passed and it, like, I let them know because, you know, I, just, you know, you let them know for, you know, because they will offer you support. Yeah. And, and my buddy, he motioned that, like, hey, you know, he's going to be going through some financial hardships here pretty soon. You know, he's going to have to start paying, you know, for all of this and his, you know, his mom's funeral services. And so he motioned, hey, you know, can the post pay, you know, 500 bucks to help him, you know, help him with his fees. And, uh, the, you know, one of the post, uh, people, um, turned around and says, I'll second that only if you raise it up to $2,000. Oh, that's awesome. And, and then I got that's passed awesome. and, you know, and they, they gave me $2,000 to help with the fee, uh, you know, my mom's, you know, final fees. And, and it, and it, it just, I sat there and blubbered like a small child in front of, uh, my fellow veterans and, you know, and, and, and they all understood. Of you course, know, and, and it, it course. is it is places like that that you know I I find a lot of support. You know, I didn't realize the bond um, about the military until when my dad passed away. You know, I got to the funeral early, and I didn't turn around the entire service, and I turned around, and there were four hundred people there, and three hundred of them were were people he served with. On that, or people who, who, who basically served at the same time as he did, you know, it was unreal. I had never seen the church feel like that ever. Ugh. Doc, do I sound? How do I sound? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> sound a little greener on the gills, kid. <laughs> this happens all the time. It's the freaking, it's a laryngitis. Yeah, and is it getting pretty cold where you are for yeah, you? <laughs> the, the temperature's dropping. Yeah, the, the cold is really, it'll really fuck your shit, man. Should I do my Batman? Should I start talking like this? Oh, yeah. Where's the trigger? <laughs> oh, yeah, I got food. <laughs> so what's going on? With with me, oh, I don't know. Shit, life. <laughs> I hear ya. I hear ya. We can still hang after this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go in the kitchen <laughs> and wrestle and wrestle something up. <laughs> what indeed? Beefaroni? What what? <laughs> so I had spaghettios earlier. Uh, we're we're coming up on four hours again. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so I'm gonna tap out and end this stream. Yeah, but, I should probably get ready for work tomorrow. <laughs> uh, you're totally invited to hang out after. Um, do you guys have anything you want to shill? Man, just just be kind to each other, you know. And I appreciate you having me on, brother. Oh, anytime. You're awesome, Doc. Um, there's a fine line between fishing and standing at the shore like an idiot. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. But you both get to watch the sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> I won't give my usual screaming spiel. <laughs> but why, why the hell am I even here then? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for watching. And anyone who's watching this in the future, thank sure. you for right. Thank you for getting through my screechy ass voice. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Reinforce your seams. Always be yourself. And I will definitely, definitely see you next time. <laughs> Rock T out with your clock out. TTFN.